Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamu alaikum. So let's get started with uh, today's lecture. This, this is going to be lecture number six. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about the hardware um, component of uh, any computing system. So hardware, as, he, as we have already discussed, uh, it is basically the tangible part of a computer system. So tangible is something that you can see, you can touch and feel. So hardware is something that you can see. Uh, as opposed to software, software is just the there's just a, a set of instructions uh, for the computer, and those instructions are encoded in binary ones and zeros. So you cannot feel or you cannot like touch those ones and zeros, hold them. They do not weigh anything. You just feel their effects. Uh, that is what it is. But hardware is the actual physical thing that you see uh, in a computer. So we'll start with the outermost part of the hardware, and that is, uh, say, we'll start with the case, the casing. So we'll start there, and uh, uh, so we'll start with the casing of a computer and a mobile device. We'll look at it. Uh, then we will go inside, and we will look at. We'll start from the CPU, central processing unit of the computer. Uh, we'll talk about the microprocessor, uh, and nowadays we have multi-core microprocessors. So we'll talk about uh, what they are, what are multi-core microprocessors. Uh, we will talk about that. Uh, and we'll talk about some other things related to microprocessors. Uh, then we will identify different characteristics of uh, computer processors uh, and uh, uh, some other important aspects related to processes. For example, processors generate a lot of heat and they need to be cool and those cooling mechanisms. Uh, we'll talk about memory, uh, motherboard and all other components inside a computer. Uh, then we'll also talk about uh, the Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things is basically uh, the next big thing uh, in, in the field of computing. When everything and by everything, we literally mean almost everything, every device, every appliance, it would be able to connect to the internet. And we'll, we'll not just have an inter internet of computers, but we'll have an internet of things. Uh, then again, we will touch upon cloud computing and we will uh, discuss how cloud computing uh, has uh, revolutionized the field of computing and how software and all these services are provided by the cloud and in what ways can the cloud benefit the individual or the organization. We'll talk about that. And then we will talk about, uh, again, we have already talked about it, so we will most quickly review this part. Define a bit and byte and how it, they are represented inside the computer. Uh, then we will look at the, briefly look at the mechanism through which uh, the stored programs inside our computer, they are accessed, they are taken out of the memory and then uh, all those things. Uh, then we will look at different types of memory, uh, the different types of uh, uh, extension ports and uh, the dif different types of adapter cards and uh, the universal serial bus or USB adapters like their purpose. We'll talk about buses, uh, uh, what buses mean in a computer system. Uh, we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about briefly about the power supply and batteries and all, the, uh, all those things and how you can take care of your computer or mobile device. So this is the layout for uh, or outline for today's uh, lecture. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to talk about is again the casing. So uh, all computers, whether they are desktops, laptops, or palm tops, or smartphones, or tablets, or any other digital device for that matter, whether it's a wearable device, whether it's a digital camera, so they are protected using a casing. Okay, So the casing is there to protect it from physical damage, uh, physical damage or from uh, to, to minimize the effects of exposure to the elements. Uh, like uh, to humidity and air and all those factors. So there is uh, the casing, it, it does that, it provides this kind of protection. Now different materials are used. For desktop, the casing is usually metallic, maybe steel or aluminium, uh, that kind of material. 
uh, for screens there would be plastic uh, good quality plastic or po any other resins or polymers kind of material uh, and then smartphones and all these things so they have different types of they use different types of materials for their casings so this is again very simple and very basic thing we don't need to even like put it here but for the sake of completion and for the sake of coverage to every area related to the hardware this is this is what we have then when we go when we open the casing and when we look inside the computer so this is how it looks so this is the inside of uh, your desktop computer so this is the desktop casing this big circuit board that you see uh, this circuit board is called the main board or motherboard or system board okay so it houses all the circuitry okay it houses the microprocessor it houses the ram uh, it houses uh, the sound card the vga card the graphics card uh, it is also it provides connections to the hard disk drives or the cd rom or dvd drive so everything is connected to this motherboard or system board okay uh, the CPU uh, like this big thing that you see this is not the processor the processor is actually underneath it this this the thing that you see here this is this most probably is the uh, cooling fan so the cooling fan of the microprocessor it is like this is the cooling fan and beneath the cooling fan is the heat sink and beneath that heat sink is the egg, the microprocessor so the microprocessor is a very tiny chip and it is a very flat kind of uh, chip uh, on top of it there is uh, a metallic uh, shield that is uh, attached to it so that shield basically extracts heat or conducts heat from the microprocessor so when the microprocessor is functioning it generates a lot of heat and that heat must be uh, dissipated effectively so that it can work properly and for that we have a heat sink so a heat sink is basically nothing but um, uh, a metal uh, a metallic object or metallic structure that is good that has a very huge surface area so it can dissipate heat easily and then there is this uh, fan on top of the heat sink so it helps the uh, key, cool down the processor so the cooler the processor the better its performance <clears throat> then we have the hard disk drive installed in here inside our desktop uh, and then we have all sorts of peripherals the sound card so the computer needs to uh, produce sound and needs to record sound and for these purposes it has a sound card so this is a peripheral device a sound card is basically used to create audio or process audio using this desktop computer so it can come as a standalone card or it can be built into the motherboard or system board okay if it is a standalone card it needs to be inserted into uh, an expansion slot or an adapter uh, slot okay or if it is built into it then you don't need to uh, occupy any uh, slot expansion slot on the motherboard so you can just use it like that uh, then of course uh, processor there must be memory modules so this is the ram module this is how your ram would look like uh, for a desktop cpu so something like this looks like a ram so it is inserted into special uh, slots for rams okay uh, and it is very easy like to know which slot big belongs to which particular component uh, then this is the um, a very important power supply so the computer it is connected to ac power supply so in pakistan say these cpus they get 220 volts uh, 220 volts ac and that 220 volts ac is then converted into dc uh, 5 volts 6 volts 12 volts so different levels of dc uh, these different components inside the computer they work at dev at different uh, operating voltages so this is what you have inside a desktop CPU uh, similarly inside the laptop we have similar things uh, inside the laptop we have the system board or motherboard or main board okay so this is how it looks like so almost uh, uh, in a laptop beneath the keyboard uh, so all the area is occupied by the uh, motherboard and almost every component is built into the motherboard okay it is built into it is integrated into the motherboard there is no separate sound card or anything like that everything is built into uh, the motherboard you you usually have uh, all these components built into it uh, memory modules they are detachable and these memory modules are small 
so they are they have a small form factor as compared to the memory modules for the desktops okay so these modules they are they they, they have a smaller form factor for the processors similarly uh, for the laptops similarly the processors uh, that are used inside the laptops if you look at those processors and their heat sinks and their fans so they are different and these processors are usually mobile processors mobile versions of the same processor so usually they they their architecture and design is such that uh, they produce as little heat as possible they try to do that uh, one way of doing it is like uh, they do not always operate at the maximum clock speed for example if you have a laptop and inside that la laptop you have a 3 gigahertz cpu you have a microprocessor that can operate at 3 gigahertz 3 billion cycles per second that is how fast it can operate but uh, the micro the mm, the the uh, the laptop the hardware the, that you have it will not operate this processor at at the maximum clock frequency that it can operate uh, why because it would like to save as much energy as possible if you operate a processor at a higher clock speed that means that it will generate more 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 power it will consume more power it will generate more heat and it will be difficult to uh, maintain its uh, temperature uh, in fact in order to maintain its temperature you, you you'll need to operate the fan and usually like you you know that laptops they operate on batteries as well so in order to cons uh, conserve battery uh, in order to conserve battery and in order to uh, extend uh, prolong the battery life uh, what usually happens is that the hardware tries to operate the cpu uh, at slower clock frequencies at slower speeds so it consumes less power it consumes less power and it generates less heat so that we don't need to spend more power to cool it down okay so that is how uh, things work in inside the laptop okay okay uh, this is uh, again talking about uh, cases so this was inside the cpu uh, and these were the cases uh, uh, so this is also an example of a case or, or a personal safe protective cases or personal safes uh, which can be used to to protect uh, certain uh, objects like you can maybe put your phone inside it or if you have extra cash or watch or any 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 other thing so these cases like this case that we talked about here these cases they are for the physical protection of your hardware okay uh, these cases are for the physical protection of your hardware Similarly, laptops like they come with uh, all sorts of uh, safety features. Uh, uh, you may not uh, see those features here, but uh, um, outside in countries where it is very common, uh, where that people like uh, they they uh, can be mugged. Uh, so in those countries, like uh, laptop is a precious commodity. So they have those uh, latches or all those kinds of things which basically make it difficult for the person who is trying to steal the laptop and uh, so ste in order to make stealing difficult they use all sorts of locks and latches and things like these so this thing is uh, important but it's it's uh, not that important uh, as well uh, again for from a perspective of security it is important uh these kinds of uh, uh, safety uh, personal safes like they have some kind of password or pin code which you have to uh, provide if you want to open it uh, and they are uh, tied up to something uh, secure uh, and you can use these things in 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 your hostels or uh, at gyms or on campus to to protect some some things okay so this is an example of a smart safe or a smart casing uh, you can say okay so this i should have removed this light this is it it just uh, uh, disturbed our the flow of our lecture so let's get back let's resume so inside the case we talked about these different components and the most important component 
among all these is the motherboard or main board or system board it has these three names okay so the motherboard or main board or system board is the main circuit board of the computer okay so it is the main circuit board of the computer it connects all the components of the computer to each other so it has the microprocessor and the microprocessor is then connected through buses to the random access memory and all devices that are connected to your cpu or your computer they need to talk to the microprocessor uh, in one way so they need to be connected to the microprocessor in some way okay and then you have the graphics card which helps uh, generate these images and which helps show you those uh, videos and all these colors uh, and then you have uh, the sound card which basically uh, right now is recording my voice and it will play my voice or this video later on when you're trying to play this video on your computer so you have all these peripherals you have uh, the uh, modem to connect to a phone line uh, and to connect to the internet using the phone line you have uh, an ethernet uh, card uh, or network interface card that allows you to connect to the internet or to a local area network so you have all these uh, components and all these different parts they are connected through the motherboard with each other so the motherboard it is called motherboard for a reason okay so it houses all the uh, uh, components of your computer okay so all the uh, chips uh, you might have heard of the name chipset so the motherboard it has uh, a set of chips and those set of chips they are basically uh, used to control these different devices so some chips ch chips might be to uh, control the 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 uh, input and output from your hard disk drive uh, some chips would be to control the input and output from your say dvd or rom drives some uh, chipset would be to control uh, communication with the usb ports on your computer okay so a computer chip is basically a small piece of semiconducting material usually silicon on which integrated circuits are etched so the chip is basically an electronic circuit okay so it has all these transistors and resistors and capacitors they are all etched into it literally etched into it okay and they they perform a certain function so they they are basically solid state electronic devices that perform a certain function and the functions uh, though which what kind of functions so i just listed those functions uh, some chips would be handling communication between your memory and your computer uh, they'll be controlling the bus the system bus uh, some chips would be controlling the communication between uh, the secondary storage devices and your uh, memory or cpu uh, so for all these different types of uh, um, peripherals you will have uh, uh, different types of controllers or chipset that would be handling their uh, functionality this is how a motherboard looks like okay so this is how your motherboard looks like this this slot here is for the processor chip okay so the processor chip is inserted here and after that we have uh, the processor's uh, heat sink and then the processor's fan okay then these uh, uh, big slots that you see uh, so they are these slots are for your memory modules here the uh, random access memory modules are inserted okay uh, you will have a large uh, battery here uh this is a battery a lithium ion uh, dry dry battery uh and it is called the cmos battery cmos is uh, the abbreviation for uh, complementary metal oxide semiconductor so why is it uh, why do we need this battery because we have a cmos memory chip and that cmos memory chip control uh, stores different settings uh for the bios uh, this uh, main board has another chip uh, that chip may not be visible but it may be somewhere here or here okay in in the vicinity of this this particular cell that chip is called the bios chip bios stands for basic input output system so whenever you turn on your cpc for the first time so the pc it uh, needs it needs to run some code and that code is stored inside a special chip 
विच इज कॉल्ड विच इज कॉल्ड अ रॉम चिप ओके और विच इज कॉल्ड विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड अ फर्मवेयर बिकॉज द सॉफ्टवेयर इज बर्न इन टू अ फिजिकल चिप ओके फर्मवेयर इज बेसिकली अ सेमी कंडक्टर मेमरी विच हैज अ सॉफ्टवेयर परमानेंट स्टोर परमानेंटली स्टोर्ड इन टू इट सो दैट दैट चिप इज कॉल्ड अ फर्मवेयर चिप सो द बायोस इज अ फर्मवेयर चिप ओके इट हैज सॉफ्टवेयर परमानेंटली burnt into it permanently stored into it why do we need that software uh, whenever we turn on the pc so the system clock needs to be checked and needs to be properly say initialize the different uh, devices connected to your computers uh, to your motherboard those devices need to be checked and initialized uh, the keyboard the mouse and all these things they need to be uh, initialized okay so that this job is done uh, it, it, these tests are called power on self tests post okay so whenever you turn on a computer the computer has to run run a sequence of tests and those tests basically check different parts of uh, the computer the ram is in order the hard drives are in order uh, the different uh, devices connected to the computer the mouse and the keyboard they are uh, in in working condition so the these tests need to be run by a software and that software is stored uh, on the bios chip okay bios is b i o s and it stands for basic input output system so it is a firmware bios is a firmware it is a software that is permanently stored into a semiconductor memory okay now bios contains the software and that stuff software is permanently uh, stored inside a chip called the firmware but there are certain things that we 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 store we 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 can make changes into and the, the and those settings we can basically we, we need to store somewhere for example we can change the system date we can change the system date so we can change the computer's date uh, the time uh, the locale uh, the region where uh, like we we want to uh, use that computer and similarly we can uh, change other settings as well inside the bios if some some of you have interacted with the bios these settings need to be stored in a memory that memory is called the cmos memory okay so the cmos memory it needs to store uh, the settings related to our bios okay now the cmos memory uh, it is a volatile memory okay so we learn later on uh towards the uh, middle of this this particular lecture that memory has two different types one is volatile memory and the other is uh, non volatile memory volatile memory loses its contents when whenever power is down okay so when power goes down the contents of volatile memory they are erased okay and non volatile memory is memory that is permanent like even if power goes down you still have uh, uh, the contents intact okay say for example hard disk drive it is non volatile memory so even when the power you turn off a computer the data that you have stored on your hard disk it, it it does not go away it stays it is there okay so that data does not need any power so uh, volatile memory if you want to retain the contents of volatile memory you need to maintain or provide steady power to it so that's why we need this battery this cmos battery because cmos battery is required to power the cmos memory so that the cmos memory can remember its settings okay so that's why we have this cmos uh, battery here okay uh, then we have if you look at the motherboard we have these different ports ports are basically places where you can connect peripheral devices okay so you have usb ports universal serial bus ports uh, we have these uh, ports for connecting a mic and speaker okay uh, audio jacks and then we have port for connecting the ethernet card uh, we have port for connecting the vga adapter okay uh, so we have these ports uh, similarly we have uh, expansion slots okay we have expansion slots so expansion slots they look like uh, they look something like say this and this and this these are expansion slots here uh, are you can call their slots for adapter cards okay 
So here you can uh, you can insert uh, other peripheral devices. For example, if you need a graphics card or if you need a GPU a graphics processing unit, you want to play 3D games or you want to do some advanced graphics and for that you need a graphics card. So you you will need to buy a separate graphics card and insert that graphics card uh, into your computer. So you can use uh, either uh, these expansion slots or these adapter slots for adapter cards. Okay, so you can use uh, any of these slots depending upon the type of card that you you want to buy and uh, insert here. Okay, so this is uh, how a motherboard looks, and this is this is these are the different parts of your motherboard. Okay. Okay, these, these slots are for your uh, RAM or memory modules. This is for the CPU or processor. And similarly here we have these different slots for connecting uh, SATA devices. SATA stands for Serial ATA Devices. Okay? So it may be your uh, Serial ATA uh, hard disk drive or Serial ATA DVD uh, or uh, any other uh, ROM drive. Okay. Uh, this is how the uh, main board or motherboard or system board of a desktop computer looks. Uh, in case of a laptop, uh, this is how that motherboard looks. Again, its shape is not as regular or rectangular uh, just like uh, the, that of motherboards. Because in, inside a laptop, we are, we are short of space. Okay, So it has to fit into a very say small area. So that's why it does not. It may not have a very regular shape. That is one thing that you that you should notice. The other thing is that everything is built into the motherboard. We don't have a lot of expansion slots. We have mostly USB ports, and these are the uh, uh, ports for connecting uh, sound devices like speaker and mic. And then we will we may have uh, USB ports, universal serial bus ports. Uh, and then we, we might have slots for connecting uh, hard disk drives and, uh, uh, and uh, optical drives, uh, things like these, okay? But inside a laptop, we do not have a lot of like uh, ports. We, we, we do have uh, ports, but we have limited number of ports. Ports are basically points where you connect peripheral devices, okay? External devices that, can, that you want to connect to the 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 uh, computer so the slots for memory module again the memory modules are much smaller uh, compared to desktop computers so those slots are also smaller and we may not have a lot of slots there so one or two maybe maximum this is a slot for the cpu uh, and the cpus uh, heat sink and fan so they are much smaller as compared to that of a desktop computer so this is how the motherboard looks uh, for both the desktop and the laptop computer. Okay. Now uh, inside uh, on the motherboard, the most important component is the processor or the microprocessor. We also call it as the microprocessor. It is also called the central processing unit or CPU. Okay. So the CPU is uh, like people call it as the brain of the computer. So it does all the intelligent work inside the computer. And what is that intelligent work? The intelligent work is that it basically interprets and executes or carries out uh, the instructions that operate a computer. Okay? So those instructions are written by software developers or programmers. Programmers write those instructions and the CPU interprets those instructions like interprets mean it, it tries to decode what those instructions mean and then it carries out or executes those instructions. Okay, that is what uh, a CPU does. Uh, nowadays, modern CPUs, they are multi-core processors. They have multiple cores. When we use the term core, so a single core is basically a minimal unit of the CPU that can execute, uh, that can decode an instruction and execute it. Okay, so multiple cores means that your computer, uh, for example, uh, say I have Core i5 on this computer and say for example it has four, it is a quad core processor, say for example, uh, it has four cores. What does that mean? That means uh, that this particular microprocessor, it can execute 
uh, four different programs at the same time. So right now I am using Microsoft PowerPoint and I'm also using recording this uh, this this lecture using OBS studio uh, and there are other processes that are running as well so uh, right now like you can see uh, let us minimize it uh, okay so right now these are the applications that I'm running that you can see one is Microsoft PowerPoint the other is OBS studio so for simplicity, we can assume that uh, one core would be executing OBS Studio, another core would be executing Microsoft PowerPoint, another code might be executing Windows Explorer, another code might be executing some other process, okay? So at any given time, at any given time, uh, our computer, it runs a lot of processes, okay? So if you go to your task manager inside your computer, so the task manager will show you how many processes are being run at any given time by your computer. So these are the processes that my computer is running. Okay, these are the processes. These are different processes mean different uh, programs or different softwares. Okay, so these are the different softwares that my computer is running. So even like four cores may not be enough. So if we go to the performance tab uh here we see cpu uh it should show me the number of cores so the number of cores that i have here is two uh, it shows me that i have two cores okay uh and then there is these uh, uh, these other things that we 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 will see so right now imagine uh, even if it has uh, two cores or four cores uh, doesn't matter so that means that at any given time it can run at least two different uh, programs and if you can see like it is uh, performing at 0.79 gigahertz okay? so that is not its maximum uh, speed uh, certainly it is not operating it at its maximum speed maybe it does not need to uh, but when it needs to it can operate at a maximum speed of say 2.4 gigahertz or maybe more than that okay Achha. so you can explore and learn about different things if you uh, if you if you look at your task manager and you uh, look at these these different things okay Achha. let's get back to our lecture okay so nowadays the processes that we have they are multi they have multiple cores so multiple cores means uh, they have inside that single chip there are um, uh, two or more processors processor cores and each processor core can execute uh, a different set of instructions uh, sorry a different uh, program so theoretically in principle at any given time you can run more than one program uh, on your microprocessor now this wasn't always the case this wasn't always the case before Intel introduced its dual core processor uh, before that like uh, processors always used to be single core so there was a single CPU and that CPU could run uh, a single program uh, at any given time okay so if you had to run more than one programs so what the processor did was that the processor actually it worked very fast uh, say the processors if the processor is uh, operating at 1 gigahertz for example that means roughly theoretically it can uh, it can carry out uh, around 1 billion operations per second 1 billion operations per second that is uh, that is a huge amount of speed okay that is very fast so that means the processor uh, it 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 can if it has to execute 10 different programs it can execute one program for a very small fraction of a second then it can go and execute another program then it can go execute another program even if it ex executes a given program for one microsecond so that is also very fast for for uh, for us because we humans like uh, uh, we our senses uh, do not operate at that speed as much as uh, as much as the microprocessor can operate okay 
so before that before modern computers uh, the the processors were uh, uh, they were single core cpus they were single core processors okay uh, they did not have multiple cores but nowadays like processors have uh, multiple cores processors also contain uh, two distinct components or units one is the control unit and the other is the arithmetic unit arithmetic and logic unit the arithmetic and logic unit does all the processing it does all the processing all the arithmetic and logic operations they are carried out by the ALU the arithmetic and logic unit okay the control unit it does all the controlling uh, by controlling we mean like if you have to execute an instruction and that is the job of the processor so first of all that instructions need needs to be fetched from memory then that instruction needs to be decoded like what does that instruction mean that needs to be figured out and then it needs to be executed and after the instruction is executed then the result needs to be stored in memory so this every instruction if it has to be executed these four steps must be followed in in the exact same sequence and again these four steps are a very a huge oversimplification of the actual process that goes on so uh, who controls uh, all these processes like uh, who who controls or manages uh, these processes that is the control unit of a processor so every processor contains a control unit and an ALU or arithmetic and logic unit ALU does or carries out all the processing and control unit carries out all the control the sequencing of all these steps and what needs to be done and when does it need when when does it need to be done so all this is managed by the control unit so this is how uh, a computer basically uh, inside this is how communication between different devices inside a computer takes place so this is this is our microprocessor uh, or simply processor or cpu it has these two units ALU arithmetic and logic unit and the control unit arithmetic and logic unit does all the data processing control unit does all the uh, coordination so it fetches the instructions from memory the data from memory uh, it decodes those instructions it uh, executes that instruction and it uh, stores the results back into memory that this coordination all of it is done by the control unit okay so instructions data information instructions are fetched from the memory data is fetched from the memory uh, the data is processed based upon these instructions and the resulting information is stored back into the memory uh, similarly uh, the input devices that are connected to our cpu they have data for example if you are if you if we have a computer and it has a keyboard the keyboard on the keyboard we are constantly pressing keys the user is constantly pressing keys and generating data that data needs to be stored inside the memory uh, similarly the computer the processor is generating output uh, that output can be in the form of uh, sound text or graphics and that that information needs to go out from the memory to the output devices uh, and similarly we have secondary storage devices our hard hard disk and usb memory and all those things uh, their software is stored uh, data is stored uh, so all that needs to be accessed from there and then moved into the the memory so you can see like uh, there is a lot going on inside a computer uh, a lot of traffic or data is moving from the input devices into the memory uh, then uh, from the memory to the CPU, uh, from the storage devices to the memory, from the memory to the storage devices, uh, from the memory to the output devices, from the memory to the CPU. So all this uh, communication is going on inside a computer uh, and it involves the microprocessor uh, and every task that, that uh, needs to be done or carried out so it does involve the microprocessor and it does involve all these communications between different parts of a uh, of the computer so the control unit is the component of the process that directs and coordinates most of the operations inside the computer okay so most of the operations all this traffic this data flow it is managed uh, in both inside the microprocessor and outside in the system level 
it is managed by the control unit. The control unit generates the necessary signals uh, that basically enable this communication. This whole communication is enabled by uh, the signals generated by the control unit. So it, it basically uh, maintains or controls the flow of this traffic. Okay, ALU, if the processor performs arithmetic and logical operations, comparison and other logical operations. So these operations are uh, carried out by the arithmetic and logic unit of the uh, microprocessor. Okay, so for every instruction, this is how, this is what, this is the minimal sequence that needs to be carried out. These are the minimal four steps that, that have to be carried out. Uh, if a processor has to execute an instruction, so these steps are going to be followed first. Uh, the control unit needs to fetch the instruction. Uh, the control unit fetches the calculations, instructions, and data from memory. So if we want to do some calculation, uh, we need to write an instruction for that calculation. That instruction would be in memory. So the processor needs to, or the control unit of the processor needs to fetch that instruction first from the memory. And the data required by the instruction, if, it, if we are going to add two numbers, those two numbers must also be fetched from the memory. And the code for the addition instruction, that also, or the instruction uh, also needs to be fetched from, from the memory. The second step would be the control unit needs to de decode it needs to interpret or understand what does the instruction mean. If the instruction is for addition, it needs to add the two numbers that it fetched from the memory. If it is for subtraction, it needs to do the subtraction. If it is for comparison, it needs to do that comparison. All these operations are done by the ALU. So once the control unit decodes the instruction, it sends the instruction and data to the ALU and the ALU then carries out that operation. The third step is, uh, once the instruction is understood ke wo kya hai, and the data is available to the ALU, the ALU performs the operation. If it is addition or subtraction or division, whatever it is, the ALU performs that operation. Once the ALU performed an operation, it has results. Okay, Those results must be stored in memory. So the fourth step is that res the results from the calculation are stored in memory. Okay? So the results are stored in memory. These four steps they form something that we call a machine cycle this is a machine cycle this is how uh, our machine or the computer it uh, executes an instruction so this is a cycle that gets repeated over and over again whenever the computer is executing any instruction so what are the steps first uh, the control unit fetches the instruction itself and the data that the instruction requires or needs to work on so those are fetched into the uh, by the control unit into the CPU. Then the control unit decodes the instruction. Like it needs to know what is this instruction. Is it an instruction for addition or subtraction or multiplication or what? Okay. And it sends the data uh, to the ALU on which that instruction has to be performed. And it informs the ALU what type of instruction needs to be performed, what type of operation needs to be performed on this data. In step 3, the ALU performs the operation on the data. The data is available to the ALU and the ALU knows what type of operation to operate on, to perform on the data. It does that. Once it does that, the fourth step is to store the results that were generated, to store the results that were generated. So these four steps are called, they, they make up a machine cycle. They make up a machine cycle and these four steps or this machine cycle is, is repeated over and over again by the CPU to execute uh, each instruction. Now when we say that the com control unit uh, brings in the data and the instruction from the memory, it fetches the instruction and data from the memory. So where do those instructions and data go? So the processor, it has registers. It has registers by registers we don't mean the registers that you use registers are basically uh, uh, a temporary uh, storage areas okay uh, their size uh, it depends upon the word size of of the cpu so if for example we this is the the cpu that i have in this laptop it is a core i5 
So this CPU is a 64-bit CPU, okay? So it has registers uh, that are 64-bit wide. So the registers inside the Core i5 that, I, that I'm using, those registers can store 64-bit data. Those registers can store 64-bit data. So data temporarily, the data that arrives from the memory, it is stored inside those registers. And these registers also store the instructions, okay? These, they also store the instructions. So for both the instructions and the data, we use these 64-bit registers, okay? So we store uh, data and instructions temporarily inside the processor. Take it. So inside the processor, we have registers, and those registers are used to store, uh, temporarily store the data on which the processor needs to operate, and the instructions, uh, which basically tell the tell the processor what kind of operation uh, needs to be performed on the data. So all that information is held in temporary registers, and these registers are inside the uh, CPU, the microprocessor. Uh, and the size of those registers depends upon the word size of that CPU. So if you have a CPU on your mobile phone, say for example, and it is a 32-bit CPU, its word size is 32 bits, then the registers inside the CPU of your micro of your mobile phone or smartphone, those registers are 32 bit wide. But here uh, on our laptop, we have a Core i5. It is 64 bit CPU, so its registers are 64 bit wide. Now these operations, like uh, we talked about, this fetching and decoding and execution and then storing of results. So these are uh, operations that are performed in a sequence. And whenever there's a sequence of operations, there, there needs to be uh, a clock. That clock will be then used by people to sequence their operations. Clock ke baghair phir aap tartib se kaam nahi kar sakte. Theek hai? So whenever you talk about a CPU or buy a CPU, so you always ask about its speed case. Ki speed kya hai? Theek hai? So by speed we mean the clock speed. Theek hai? So clock speed kya hoti hai? Aapka jo computer hai, so inside that, uh, on that computer there is uh, a small clock. Clock kya hai? Aap jo normal ghadiya istemal karte hai, us mein bhi agar aap dekhe na, us pe likha hota hai quads watch ya quads likha hota hai. So quads is basically a crystal material, theek hai? Uh, it is a ceramic material I guess, uh, aur ye piezo, uh, piezoelectric material hai. So if you apply electric voltage across across this material, it starts to oscillate. Okay? So ye oscillate karna shuru kar deta hai. And anything that, that is oscillating can be used as a clock. Anything that is oscillating uh, at a regular frequency, it can be used as a clock. Aapki ghadiyo mein bhi uh, quartz crystal oscillator use hota hai. Wo crystal oscillator a khas uh, regular frequency se uh, oscillate karta hai. So, say uska time period 1 second hai, theek hai? So, agar uska time period 1 second hai, to phir aap usko use kar sakte hai for creating or making a clock. The crystal oscillators that we have on our uh, computers, so they have very high frequencies, frequencies that run in, in gigahertz, theek hai? So, that is basically the clock speed of your system and that sets the speed of operations uh, on which your computer performs, theek hai? So system clock, jo hai, it controls the timing of all computer operations. When will things be fetched? When will they be decoded? When will they be executed? When will the result be stored? So all these operations are timed or sequenced using a system clock. And uh, that clock, uh, its, 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 its frequency or speed is, is the clock speed. And it is usually in gigahertz. Uh, this is... Uh, an Intel Core i7, uh, if you look at it, so this is what you'll see. Uh, again, uh, this is slightly bigger than the actual processor. Like if you see, it depend, depend karta. I have a bigger screen, so it looks very big. The actual processor would be around one and a half inch by one and a half inch, something like that. Uh, there are two uh, leading companies. One is Intel. And the other is Advanced Micro Electronic Devices or Advanced Micro Devices, AMD. So AMD and Intel, they both make similar processors. Like they, these processors have the same instruction set. They have the same instruction set. They 
execute they can execute uh, the same instruction set so they are similar uh, uh, of, uh, as far as the programmer is concerned uh, but on the inside their architecture can be uh, different the way they are designed or the way they are implemented that can be different uh, but they execute the same set of instructions okay they are compatible with each other they are compatible with each other if you have created a software or a program for uh, an intel microprocessor an amd microprocessor uh, can also execute that that software or code okay so the software does not feel any difference whether it is running uh, on top of an intel whether, whether it is being executed by an intel microprocessor or by any amd microprocessor okay the software does not know uh you can know maybe uh, nowadays amd microprocessors are very good in performance uh, so maybe you will feel you will feel uh, some difference in performance if you are using an amd microprocessor and if you are using intel maybe you can find uh, uh, some lag in performance compared to amd okay so that might be the case other than that these two processors are compatible with each other theek okay? hai okay now again we have uh, talked about this that a processor chip generates heat that could cause the chip to malfunction or fail so what do we need to do uh, in order to cool it down we need to have heat sinks uh, so heat sinks are basically uh, metals with a large surface area they are made up of metals and they are designed in such a way that they have a large surface area and then there is a fan on top of the heat sink and the fan uh, it basically uses forced convection to cool down the cpu uh in some for some cpus uh, uh air cooling or cooling by the forced movement or flow of air or induced flow of air may not be enough so they use liquid cooling liquid cooling is achieved using either water or glycol uh they can th th those kind of coolants can be used to cool down processors Uh, i guess uh, gpus or gp gpus they use uh, liquid cooling technology and then we can have cooling pads as well so cooling pads are basically additional pads uh, that are usually placed uh, below a laptop uh, so cooling pads have dual purpose they help keep the uh, they help cool down the laptop and also they protect the lap of the laptop user so the laptop user if if he or she is using the lap and the uh, laptop is running for quite some time so it can heat up and that heat can be uh, harmful to the user so the cooling pads they protect both both the laptop and uh, the 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 user so sometimes they have a usb fan like you connect a usb that usb fan to the usb port of your laptop so it generates it it gets power from the usb port and it keeps the laptop as well as the cooling uh, pad it, it cools the, the fan cools down both and sometimes they don't have such things okay so these are basically examples of things that we use to cool down laptops now this is this is this is your processor uh, and you can see it is a very small thing uh and uh like this thing this metallic base that you see uh this is this is not part of the processor pr processor but this thing is uh, basically glued to the processor and on top of this you glue uh, the heat sink this heat sink is then uh connected to here connected to 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 this chip okay and then it is screwed down or bolted to to your uh, motherboard uh this is the heat sink theek hai so if you look at this heat sink so this is basically this is how it is it is shaped theek hai na isko yun shape kiya jata hai taaki maximum surface area ho yahan pe ye beech mein ye jo jagah create ki jati hai to ye surface area ko increase karne ke liye taaki maximum heat dissipate ho sake and then at, on top of it there is a fan theek hai so the fan jo hai wo uh, throws the air upwards so it creates this vacuum underneath jisko fill up karne ke liye bahar se ya sideon se hawa aati hai theek hai and that air then takes off the heat from this this heat sink and hot air is thrown outwards theek hai 
सो आई होप लाइक दिस इज ईजी इसके बगैर आपका सी पी यू काम नहीं करेगा इसके बगैर बहुत जल्द आपका सी पी यू उसका टेम्परेचर इतना बढ़ जाएगा कि मे बी आपका सिस्टम ऑटोमेटिकली शट डाउन हो जाए इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोटेक्ट द सी पी यू ओके सो इफ देर इज एनी प्रॉब्लम विद द सी पी यू फैन सो देन आपका जो सिस्टम है इट विल शट डाउन इट विल स्लो डाउन यू विल नोटिस कि आपका सिस्टम ठीक काम नहीं कर रहा है द सी पी यू फैन इज नॉट वर्किंग आल्दो दे आर वेरी रिलायबल कंपोनेंट्स बहुत कम ही खराब होते हैं सालों काम करते हैं लेकिन खराब नहीं होते लेकिन स्टिल दे कैन गेट ब्लॉक्ड और दे कैन अगर आपके इलाके में डस्ट ज़्यादा है और इसके इशूज़ हैं तो देर कैन भी प्रॉब्लम्स सो इट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट वंस इन अवाइल कि आप अपने सी पी यू को उसकी डस्टिंग वस्टिंग करें यू यूज़ कंप्रेस्ड एयर और ब्लोअर्स ताकि ये डस्ट वगैरह और ये सारी चीज़ें अगर उसमें अटी हुई हैं या जाले वाले बने हुए हैं तो यू शुड यू शुड डू दिस क्लीन अप वंस इन अवाइल इन ऑर्डर टू इम्प्रूव द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ योर सी पी यू दिस इज़ अ कूलिंग पैड कूलिंग पैड जो है अगेन इट इज़ परफोरेटेड इसके अंदर फैन भी लग, लगा हो सकता है यूजली आप लैपटॉप के उसके ऊपर रखते हैं सो इट प्रोटेक्ट बोथ द यूजर एज वेल एज द लैपटॉप तो डुअल पर्पज सर्व करता है अच्छा नेक्स्ट कंप्यूटर्स के अलावा वी सेट दैट द फ्यूचर इज फॉर ऑफ इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स सो नॉट जस्ट कंप्यूटर्स बट ऑलमोस्ट एवरी अदर डिवाइस वुड बी कनेक्टेड टू द इंटरनेट ओके so from devices to things so uh, in addition to your computers and mobile devices there would be plenty of other things that would be connected to uh, your computer for example in pakistan like we don't have uh, extreme weather conditions like in canada or in other countries so in those countries uh, there is a centralized heating and cooling system inside homes so there you can go for a smart thermostat and the smart thermostat like it can be accessed via the internet you can uh, set uh, uh, send and receive data to this thermostat and basically you can set temperature your home temperature if you're uh, if it is winters and you want to go back home and you want the house to be nice and warm when you enter it so you can turn on the thermostat a little bit you can like increase the temperature there and the centralized heating system will turn on and it will warm up your home okay so by the time you get there it will uh, re- like warm up the uh, environment for you uh, something like that uh, similarly you can have uh, medicine bottles or bottles of medicine uh, with uh, uh, internet connectivity through a wireless chip and as soon as the medicine is about to finish so it it can let you know or it can send a message to your pharmacy uh, and the pharmacy will refill the prescription for you and send you new medicine uh, similarly we can have smart trash cans again these are all good ideas for projects if you want to do in your final year so smart trash cans will send some message to to the to the concerned people if it is full if it is about to get full or something like that so it will notify either the owner or the people who are responsible for these trash cans ke bhai ye ab bhar gaya hai ya bharne wala hai isko khali kare theek hai so isse kya hota hai it will save garbage collectors a lot of time like they won't need to che- physically go and check every uh, trash can but but again in order to enable all this thing we need power we need internet connectivity and these will these things will be make these uh, uh, trash cans and all these things um, uh, expensive they they will add to the cost theek okay? hai uh similarly we have uh, these wearable uh, technologies smart watches and wrist bands and these <coughs> they they uh, they can um, uh, these smart watches and wrist wrist band they can monitor our uh, Uh, क्या कहते हैं uh, जो इसेंशियल हेल्थ पैरामीटर्स हैं दे कैन मॉनिटर और हार्ट बीट दे कैन मॉनिटर मे बी द ब्लड सेचुरेशन ऑक्सीजन सेचुरेशन लेवल इन आवर ब्लड व्हिच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ डेज स्पेशली इन कोविड एंड दे कैन रिपोर्ट ऑल दीज वैल्यूज टू 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 आवर फोन एंड यूजिंग आवर फोन दीज कैन बी रिपोर्टेड टू 
uh, uh, the hospital or our health provide health care provider those people who are responsible for our health so they can be connected together and all this data can go directly to the doctor uh, in case of critical patients okay uh, similarly uh, like uh, those of you who are using uh, uh, who are using uh, for example uh, the uh, bus rapid transport system in Peshawar or uh, in some other country so there uh, you have some sort of system where you're basically informed like uh, where uh, in 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 how in how much time the next bus is expected in more advanced countries this is slightly uh, even more advanced like you get real time information about the actual location of the bus like when is a particular bus uh, going to reach the bus stop that you are standing how many bus stops away it is and all that so that information uh, the real time location of uh, the bus or subway so it is uh, collected uh, it is recorded or using gps sensors and then uh, those sensors the, that information is uh, sent to a centralized server and then that information can be accessed by people with some mobile app or something like that okay similarly uh, retailers they can advertise uh, to their potential customers uh, using uh, small beacons beacons you can see that there is a place where roshni is found okay so these these can be bluetooth beacons yahan se bluetooth ke signals jo hai na wo emit kiye jate hain so ek dukandar jo hai wo ek bluetooth beacon laga sakta hai apni shop pe to bajaye iske ke wo cheekh cheekh ke logon ko kahe ke ji sale hai sale hai sale hai to wo is beacon se apni jo deals hain wo constantly wo uh, disseminate kar sakta hai and anybody who is passing by that area and that person has uh, enabled bluetooth and that person has subscribed for the service and that person can automatically receive uh, information about any deal or something like that uh, similarly uh, washers and dryers hamare hostels mein to nahi hote provide nahi kiye jate lekin bahar dormitories mein uh, washers or dryers they are available in dormitory and you have to do your own laundry अब कौन कौन सी वॉशिंग मशीन कब फारिग है या फारिग नहीं है दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन अगर ये आपको अपने रूम में बैठ के मिल जाती है तो दैट वुड बी अ वेरी नाइस थिंग आपको टाइम नहीं ज़ाया करना पड़ेगा तो आप अपने मोबाइल ऐप के जरिए या किसी और चीज़ के जरिए आप यू कैन फाइंड आउट विच मशीन इज़ अवेलेबल फॉर डूइंग लॉन्ड्री एंड यू कैन गो देर एंड डू योर लॉन्ड्री अपने कपड़े धो सकते हैं ठीक है so this is the future this is how things are envisaged in the future everything every device will be connected uh, to the internet and it would be accessible to people and it would help them do things in a much more uh, better way that is what the internet of things is that is what the idea about internet of things is theek okay? hai next again we mentioned uh, we said something about cloud computing in the beginning and right now all of you are using cloud computing in one way or the other so all of you are uh, like using google classroom now google classroom and all of google's services all of google services they are cloud based services okay so all the all the files that i upload on google classroom uh, those files uh, are available on my google drive and they would be available on your google drive as well because i am sharing those files with you and google drive is nothing but basically storage for that is reserved for you on the cloud theek okay? hai so cloud computing is uh, is uh, something that is going to be uh, even more important in the future okay and why is cloud computing important why do people go for cloud computing so these are the some of the uh, some of the uh, remarkable qualities or some of the uh, 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 best features of cloud computing that basically attract people and people are using cloud computing the first one is accessibility okay accessibility means uh, if you have stored your data on the cloud or if you are using the cloud uh, for something theek okay? hai 
अच्छा जब मैं ये टर्म यूज करता हूँ ना क्लाउड के इफ योर डेटा इज ऑन द क्लाउड सो इस क्लाउड से मेरे मुराद बादल नहीं है इस क्लाउड से मेरी मुराद कंप्यूटर uh, है या सर्वर है या सर्वर फॉर्म है ऑफ अ कंपनी दैट प्रोवाइड्स क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग सर्विसेज ठीक है तो फर्ज की अगर मैं चाहता हूं कि मैं लोगों को क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड करूं सो so मैं एक कंप्यूटर लेके ये सर्विसेज तो नहीं प्रोवाइड कर सकता बिकॉज आई हैव टू प्रोवाइड दिस सर्विस टू हंड्रेड ऑफ थाउजेंड ऑफ पीपल मिलियन ऑफ पीपल फेसबुक गूगल एंड ऑल दीज बिग कंपनीज दे हैव बिलियन ऑफ एक्टिव यूजर्स एंड दोज बिलियन ऑफ एक्टिव यूजर्स दे स्पेंड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम ऑफ देयर डे यूजिंग दीज सर्विसेज ठीक है सो इन ऑर्डर टू केटर टू द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ बिलियन ऑफ दीज यूजर्स दे नीड टू हैव अज फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ठीक है सो यहाँ हम एक कंप्यूटर दो कंप्यूटर की बातें नहीं कर रहे या हम लाखों कंप्यूटर्स की बहुत ही पावरफुल कंप्यूटर्स की बात बातें कर रहे हैं ठीक है सो दे हैव सर्वर फॉर्म्स एंड दो सर्वर फॉर्म्स हैव हंड्रेड्स ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पावरफुल सर्वर्स और कंप्यूटर्स ठीक है जिनकी कैपेसिटी स्टोरेज कैपेसिटी इज इन पैटाबाइट्स ठीक है टेराबाइट्स में भी नहीं है वो पैटाबाइट्स में uh, उनकी स्टोरेज कैपेसिटी होती है और uh, Uh, उनकी पावर कंजम्पन इतनी ज्यादा होती है कि बड़ी बड़ी सिटीज से उनकी पावर कंजम्पन जो है वो मैच करती है ठीक है और उनकी हीटिंग और कूलिंग कूलिंग की जो रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं और उनमें घूमना फिरना यानी उस उसके लिए आपको गाड़ियां चाहिए होती हैं दोज इलेक्ट्रिक कार्स और वैंस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स सो यू नीड दो थिंग्स इन ऑर्डर टू मूव अराउंड दो सर्वर फॉर्म्स दे आर सच ह्यूज प्लेसेस ठीक है सो वेन एवर वी से क्लाउड क्लाउड डज नॉट मीन कि हम बादल के ऊपर चीजें भिजवा रहे हैं क्लाउड मीन्स के सम कंपनी हैज अज फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड दैट फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज अवेलेबल टू मिलियन ऑफ पीपल्स अक्रॉस द ग्लोब एंड वी आर जस्ट यूजिंग अ वेरी स्मॉल पोर्शन ऑफ दैट ह्यूज फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और उस बहुत ही स्मॉल पोर्शन पे हम अपना डेटा स्टोर कर रहे होते हैं या वहाँ से हम कोई ऐप जो है उसको यूज कर रहे होते हैं जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू माइट बी यूजिंग गूगल डॉक्स आप मे बी गूगल डॉक से वाकिफ हैं सो गूगल डॉक्स क्या हैं जिस तरह जस्ट लाइक वी हैव माइक्रोसॉफ्ट वर्ड एंड माइक्रोसॉफ्ट पावर पॉइंट एंड माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एक्सेल सो गूगल हैज दीज ऑफिस एप्लीकेशन गूगल डॉक्स गूगल शीट्स गूगल स्लाइड्स सो यू कैन यूज दोज एप्स टू क्रिएट योर वर्ड योर वर्ड डॉक्यूमेंट्स टू क्रिएट योर स्प्रेड शीट्स टू क्रिएट योर प्रजेंटेशंस and you don't need to install any software for that all you need is a web browser you go to the web browser and you open uh, docs.google.com or sheets.google.com or slides.google.com you log in and then you can start working so you can start creating documents or creating spreadsheets uh, online using your browser you don't need to install any software you can do it on your phone as well theek hai so that is the idea of cloud computing you do not need any local resources to do something locally you you only need very minimal resources everything happens on the cloud the cloud is basically very powerful computing platform or infrastructure by by some service provider cloud service provider theek hai by a cloud company or whatever you call it so sabse jo bada advantage hai that is accessibility so data that is stored on the cloud or any uh, software that you use from the uh, from the cloud or any other service that you use on the cloud it is accessible from everywhere anywhere where you have internet you have access to that service theek hai so the only requirement is internet so if you have a local infrastructure to wo local infrastructure phir aapke liye wahan locally jahan pe aap honge na तो जहाँ पे आपका डेस्कटॉप सी है तो वहीं पे आप उस पर काम कर सकते हैं लैपटॉप अगर है तो उसको भी आपको घुमाना फिराना पड़ेगा अपने साथ या जो भी आपको रिसोर्सेज चाहिए तो द फर्स्ट द ब्यूटी ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग इज दैट इट इज एक्सेसिबल फ्रॉम ऑल अक्रॉस द ग्लोब आप कहीं पे भी चले जाएं इफ यू हैव समथिंग ऑन द क्लाउड यू कैन एक्सेस इट ठीक है कॉस्ट सेविंग्स कॉस्ट सेविंग से मुराद वट डू मीन इट इट इज इट कैन सेव यू अलॉट ऑफ कॉस्ट You do not need to invest in huge physical infrastructure. आपको कोई जरूरत नहीं है बहुत powerful computers खरीदने के लिए आपको कोई जरूरत नहीं है uh, hiring manpower to maintain and run दो that computing those computing resources. So somebody has invested a huge amount of money already. 
सो यू कैन गो और उनके कंप्यूटिंग रिसोर्सेज को आप यूज करें इट इज देयर जॉब टू प्रोवाइड यू ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन अवेलेबिलिटी देर इज दिस इज देयर जॉब एंड प्रॉब्लम ठीक है यू डोंट नीड टू वरी अबाउट इट एंड यू कैन पे एज यू गो मतलब जितना आप यूज करते हैं आप अपनी यूजेज के हिसाब से उनको पेमेंट कर सकते हैं ठीक है uh, अगर आप अपना फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बनाते हैं ठीक है Uh, तो आप जो है फिर उस फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पे पूरी की पूरी इन्वेस्टमेंट आप करेंगे यानी फॉर एग्जांपल आपको सौ uh, बंदों के लिए कंप्यूटर्स चाहिए तो आपने सौ कंप्यूटर्स खरीदने होंगे ठीक है uh, और अगर आपको और रिसोर्सेज चाहिए वो सारे रिसोर्सेज में आपने इन्वेस्टमेंट करनी होगी क्लाउड में फायदा ये है कि अगर आपको दस uh, बंदों के लिए कंप्यूटर्स या कोई सॉफ्टवेयर या कोई सर्विस चाहिए तो आप दस बंदों के लिए वो ले लें अगर आपके बंदे बढ़ जाते हैं आपको ज्यादा रिक्वायरमेंट्स है तो आप बढ़ा लें इसको ठीक है तो वो क्लाउड को जितना आपकी जरूरत होगी उसके हिसाब से आप पेमेंट करेंगे आपकी कोई कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट उसमें नहीं होगी कि आप चीजें नहीं खरीद रहे हैं और फिर मजीद खरीद रहे हैं और फिर बेच रहे हैं और फिर कुछ चीजें यूज नहीं हो रही वगैरह वगैरह स्पेस सेविंग यू डोंट नीड टू इन्वेस्ट इन 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 द फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जब आप उसमें इन्वेस्ट नहीं करेंगे तो आपको जगह की बचत होगी यू कैन यूज दैट फॉर सम सम अदर पर्पज ठीक है स्केलेबिलिटी स्केलेबिलिटी मीन्स अगर आपकी जरूरत बढ़ जाती है सो यू कैन ऑलवेज एक्वायर मोर रिसोर्स फ्रॉम द क्लाउड और अगर आपकी जरूरतें घट जाती हैं सो यू कैन रिलीज सम रिसोर्स और उससे आपका बिल भी कम हो जाएगा एंड दो आर नॉट फिजिकल रिसोर्स दो आर वर्चुअल रिसोर्स यानी आप वर्चुअली उनको बढ़ाते हैं घटाते हैं फिजिकली ये रिसोर्स तो गूगल मेंटेन कर रहा होगा या एमेजॉन वेब सर्विस वाले मेंटेन कर रहे होंगे या माइक्रोसॉफ्ट मेंटेन कर रहा होगा माइक्रोसॉफ्ट अजूर का जो प्लेटफॉर्म है क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग वो वाले लोग मेंटेन कर रहे होंगे ठीक है तो दीज आर द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग अच्छा सो इसमें वी हैव दीज डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट वन कॉन्सेप्ट इज सॉफ्टवेयर एज अ सर्विस ठीक है यानी क्लाउड में एवरीथिंग बिकम्स अ सर्विस दैट इज प्रोवाइडेड बाई योर क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग सर्विस स्टोरेज बिकम्स अ सर्विस आपको हार्ड uh, डिस्क चाहिए आप हार्ड डिस्क ना खरीदें आप किसी और बंदे की हार्ड डिस्क पे अपने लिए जगह खरीद लें ठीक है सो बाज केसेस में तो आपको वो जगह खरीदने की भी जरूरत नहीं है फॉर एग्जांपल गूगल आपको पंद्रह जी बी मुफ्त में जगह देता है यू क्रिएट एन ईमेल अकाउंट विद गूगल एंड गूगल विल गिव यू फिफ्टीन जी बी ऑफ स्टोरेज स्पेस ऑन देयर कंप्यूटर तो इट डजेंट मैटर कि वो किस हार्ड डिस्क पे कहाँ पे कहाँ पे नहीं है आपको पंद्रह जी की जगह बस मिल जाती है उस पंद्रह जी में आप जो भी अपना डेटा सेव करते हैं करें पूरी दुनिया में आप कहीं पे भी हो यू कैन एक्सेस दैट डेटा ठीक है सो दैट इज स्टोरेज एज अ सर्विस सॉफ्टवेयर एज अ सर्विस से क्या मुराद है सॉफ्टवेयर एज अ सर्विस से मुराद है कि इफ यू नीड टू डू समथिंग यू डोंट नीड टू बाय अ सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर दैट और अ सॉफ्टवेयर लाइसेंस फॉर दैट ठीक है आप अपना सॉफ्टवेयर खरीदेंगे उसका लाइसेंस खरीदेंगे और ये सारी चीजें यू डोंट नीड टू डू दैट इफ यू नीड टू यूज अ पर्टिकुलर सॉफ्टवेयर सो दैट पर्टिकुलर सॉफ्टवेयर इज usually mostly provided by uh, some cloud service provider aap us cloud service provider se uh, us software ko uh, use kare matlab through a web browser aap log in kare aur aap us software ko access kar sakte hain through your web browser theek hai aur aap usko use kare for example microsoft ki uh, cloud services plate platform hai azure so you can use it टू क्रिएट यानी आपको ये वर्ड और पावर पॉइंट और इनको खरीदने की और इंस्टॉल करने की जरूरत ही नहीं है यू कैन एक्सेस और यू कैन यूज माइक्रोसॉफ्ट वर्ड माइक्रोसॉफ्ट पावर पॉइंट एंड माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एक्सेल थ्रू योर ब्राउजर यूजिंग योर ब्राउजर यू कैन एक्सेस दो सर्विस आप उनको एक्सेल की शीट्स क्रिएट कर सकते हैं पावर पॉइंट प्रजेंटेशन बना सकते हैं वर्ड डॉक्यूमेंट्स बना सकते हैं and you won't have any of these softwares installed on your system you can use just your browser theek hai so this is kind of software as a service it is being provided to you as a service theek hai uh there is another company uh ye kaun si company hai ji salesforce.com so this company it provides software as a service it has this uh, software for uh, customer relationship management okay so if you need to do some kind of marketing or some kind of sales job if you need to do that 
so it has its own custom software and that software is provided is available to anybody who wants to do it who wants to use it theek hai as a service ke ye hamara software hai aap isko istemal karna chahte hain to ji aap istemal kare 1000 log istemal karna chahte hain 1000 log istemal kar sakte hain and you pay for just the amount of time ya amount of work jiske liye aap usko istemal karte hain theek hai so software as a service ka ye matlab hai ki aap डॉक्यूमेंट्स को एडिट करना चाहते हैं सो आप कोई वर्ड प्रोसेसर ना खरीदें ठीक है देर आर कंपनीज दैट हैव दी सॉफ्टवेयर जिनके पास वो हैं यू कैन लॉग इन टू दोज कंपनीज एंड यूज दोज सॉफ्टवेयर ऑनलाइन थ्रू योर ब्राउजर ठीक है सिमिलरली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू फोटो एडिटिंग सो एडोबी एडोबी Uh, आपको ये तमाम जो सर्विसेज हैं उनके जितने भी स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट इमेज प्रोसेसिंग सॉफ्टवेयर्स हैं दो सॉफ्टवेयर्स आर अवेलेबल टू यू यू कैन यूज दो सॉफ्टवेयर्स फॉर एज मच एज यू वांट फॉर एज लॉन्ग एज यू वांट लेकिन जितना आप इस्तेमाल करेंगे उस इस्तेमाल के हिसाब से आप उनको पेमेंट देंगे ठीक है सो आपको वो सॉफ्टवेयर लाइसेंस खरीदना और उसको उस तरीके से यूज़ uh, करने की ज़रूरत नहीं है Uh, उसको इंस्टॉल करने की भी जरूरत नहीं है यू डोंट नीड टू इंस्टॉल दैट सॉफ्टवेयर लोकली ठीक है आप उनका कोई इंटरफेस या कोई सॉफ्टवेयर और सॉफ्टवेयर जो है उसको आप इंस्टॉल कर सकते हैं एंड यूजिंग दैट इंटरफेस सॉफ्टवेयर आप फिर उनके किसी और सॉफ्टवेयर को जो है वो एक्सेस कर सकते हैं ठीक है सो दिस इज द आइडिया ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर एज ए सर्विस अच्छा so we talked about cloud computing uh, we talked about uh, uh, the microprocessor uh, we talked about the motherboard and all the, these things here uh, again we have covered these things in a lot of detail we have talked about analog signals ke analog signals kya hain they are basically continuous in time and in magnitude theek hai uh, analog signals are continuous and vary in strength and quality so again bas analog signals you you know what analog signals are so along the time axis they are continuous they they have value or they are defined at every point in time and along the y axis their magnitude it can be any value okay so there is no limitation ke ye fixed values ho sakti hain iske alawa koi nahi digital signals are basically uh, discrete signals theek hai uh, and we said whenever we say digital we mean their binary signals okay so digital signals can have these possible states one one of two states on and off or vagara vagara uh but that is not the end of it theek hai digital does not mean ke sirf on ya off digital means ke uh, if anything is digital that means ke um, like it works in the binary number system but binary number system may be can represent uh, more than just two states and sirf two states hi nahi hote ke unko hum represent kar sakte hain we can represent two states with a single bit but if we need to represent more than two states we can use more bits theek hai if we have eight bits we can represent 256 possible states if we have 16 bits so we can represent 65536 more possible states theek hai so we have talked about that this is a lot of detail we know what a bit is what bytes are uh, how does the binary system work so we know all that what digital is so this is a bit a bit is basically either on or off uh it is just like a switch okay so we have talked about it uh the switch can be represented by many different things like these it can be represented by the absence or presence of charge in a, as in a capacitor charge or discharge it can be represented by the state of particular device say for example a transistor so the transistor can be in the cut off state or in the saturation state it might be conducting or it might not be conducting theek hai uh it can be as in the case of uh, magnetic media it can be a clockwise magnetic fields or a counterclockwise magnetic field it can be as in the case of optical media it can be a pit or uh, it can be a flat uh, region okay so all these different uh, different uh, mechanisms are used to represent uh, either a one or zero so we have talked about that in a lot detail uh then we said that if you have eight bits we call it a byte and these are basically the ascii codes uh for this is the ascii code for the letter e this is the ascii code for asterisk uh this is the ascii code for the uh number 6 okay so 
eight bits are grouped together as a unit and it is called a byte. We know what a byte is. A byte represents a single character in the computer or mobile device. So that is ASCII. These are ASCII characters. Okay? So we've talked about ASCII as well. So again, this is easy. I hope it is. Uh, when you press any key on your computer's keyboard, so that key, uh, ultimately, it is translated into uh, an ASCII code. Okay? Uh, how does that happen? So th these are the steps that are involved. Okay? Uh, if you press any key on your computer, say for example, if you press Shift plus T, okay, so you want to type capital T on your computer. So your keyboard, uh, it will generate a scan code, a special code, and that special code is called a scan code for the letter capital T. Capital T ke liye ek special code generate karega jisko scan code kehte hai. That scan code is sent to the CPU. CPU ke andar keyboard controller laga hoga. Wo jo keyboard controller hai, it will look at the scan code and it will find out, determine ke this is uh, capital T uh, has been pressed. So it will generate the ASCII code for capital T. Theke? So the electronic circuitry or keyboard controller jo hai, it is hardware inside the motherboard. It will basically convert the scan code uh, uh, generated by the keyboard into the ASCII code for capital T. And the ASCII code for capital T is this. Okay? So, this ASCII code hai, it will be stored uh, in the memory for processing. What is the processing? If you press T, then you will press T. So, you will display the display. So, you display the display. So, display the display. So, display the graphics card. Karta hai. So graphics card ko ye jo T hai, iska binary jo ASCII code hai, ye transfer kar diya jata hai, usse kaha jata hai ki aap draw karein T ko on the output device. So it draws the T on the output device. So this is how things uh, happen in, inside a computer, theek hai? Yani ye jo digital ki baat hum kar rahe hain aur ye jo bits aur bytes ki baat kar rahe hain. So on the computer everything... Uh, whether it is text or uh, images or sounds, it is ultimately converted into binary. This is just one example. Baki examples in class in detail. So this is how, what happens when you press a key on the keyboard. The keyboard generates a special code called the scan code for any character, uh, any key that you press. That scan code is sent to the uh, motherboard where your keyboard controller is the motherboard, uh, the keyboard controller, hai, the hardware on the computer's motherboard, it converts the letter or scan code into the ASCII code and stores it in memory for further processing. And then, if you want to display or something else, then the ASCII code, the VGA card, the graphics card, it goes and it draws that letter uh, on, the, on the display. Okay? Okay. Next, uh, after the processor and after uh, how the processor, what kind of data the processor processes and the motherboard and all that, we are going to talk about memory. Memory consists of electronic components that store instructions waiting to be executed. So, memory may not only we store instructions stored karte hain, jinko abhi execute hona hai by the processor, we also store the data uh, that is required by those instructions. These instructions, they operate on some data. That data is also stored inside the memory. And once the instructions operate on the data, results are generated. And the results of processing, they are also stored in memory. So, memory may storage ki kaam kiye jate hain. Kaun kaun si cheezein memory mein store ki jati hain? Thik hai? To aap ka operating system permanently uska kuch part jo hai na, wo memory mein store kiya jata hai. Thik hai? Uh, the permanently resident part of the operating system, and the operating system ka ek khas hissa constantly hamesha memory mein load rehta hai. Wo memory se kabhi nahi hatta. So that part of the operating system which is always resident inside the RAM or random access memory is called the kernel. So aapka operating system aur kuch other us, iske saath kuch aur allied programs, device drivers vagaira. And device drivers se kya murat hai? Aap kisi device ko use karte hai, which is connected to your computer. So, us device ko operate karne wala software, the software that knows how to operate that device, that software is called a device driver. 
so the device driver is always uh, they're always loaded agar if that device is being used so its device driver the software that operates that device that is always loaded inside the ram theek hai so aapka operating system operating system ka jo wo wala part jo ki hamesha memory mein rehta hai usko kernel kehte hain so it is also always inside the memory and then other programs jisme device drivers shamil hain wo loaded hote hain iske alawa operating system ke aur bahut sare parts ya aur bahut sare programs ho sakte hain jo ke loaded honge first ki if you have an antivirus installed so antivirus sab bhi it will also be loaded inside the ram there may be applications for example if right now i am using microsoft powerpoint and obs studio so their code is also loaded inside the memory <coughs> and similarly uh, all the data that is being processed ye jo presentation aap dekh rahe hain so this is loaded inside the memory aur phir ye jo main kaam kar raha hu na yahan screen pe ye jo line draw kar raha hu aur ye writing kar raha hu so this is also stored inside the memory theek hai so all these things they are stored inside the memory uh memory mein how are things stored inside the memory theek hai so this is how things are stored inside memory you can view the memory as uh कंटीग्यूस रोज ऑफ बाइट साइज लोकेशन तो आप इस एक सीट को जिस तरह ये सिनेमा में लोग या स्टेडियम में लोग बैठे हुए हैं एंड देर आर सीट्स एंड हर सीट में एक बंदा फिट हो सकता है सो यू कैन इमेजिन दैट इन साइड द रैम वी हैव दीज मेमरी लोकेशन और हर लोकेशन का साइज इज वन बाइट सो यू कैन स्टोर वन बाइट ऑफ डेटा and uh, those locations are contiguous ek ke baad dusra dusre ke baad teesra teesre ke baad chautha is is tarike se hote hain and each location has an address each location has an address just like yahan pe is stadium mein har seat ka apna ek number hota hai j21 j20 etc etc so similarly we have an address a numeric address ek number hota hai jo ke ram ki har location ko identify karta hai ram ki har location ko identify karta and nowadays the size of rams that we use so that size is in gigabytes or gbs theek hai so say for example ye jo mera laptop hai i guess it has around 8 gigabytes ram or 8 gbs ram theek hai so we measure ram in this uh, is tarike se maybe the smartphone that you are using it will have around 2 gigabytes of ram or 3 gigabytes of ram so this is how we measure the size of ram now the types of, uh, of memories <coughs> computers and mobile devices they contain two types of memory so computers ho ya mobile devices ho usme do kisam ki memory hoti hai one is volatile memory we mentioned it before the other is non volatile memory volatile memory volatile kyun kehlai jati what is volatile volatile is something that flies away फॉर एग्जाम्पल अल्कोहल या स्पिरिट्स जो होते हैं ना दे आर वोलेटाइल केमिस्ट्री में शायद आपने पढ़ा हो तो उनके फ्यूम्स बनते हैं और कुछ देर बाद वो खत्म हो जाते हैं ठीक है सो वोलेटाइल इज इन मेमरी वोलेटाइल मेमरी इज अ मेमरी विच लूज इज इट्स कॉन्टेंट्स वेन पावर इज टर्न ऑफ आप बिजली बंद कर दें तो उनके कॉन्टेंट्स गायब हो जाते हैं सो एग्जाम्पल इज रैम तो रैम में जो भी चीज स्टोर्ड है अगर बिजली चली जाए तो वो गायब हो जाती है देन उन चीजों को दोबारा से लोड करना होता है इन टू द रैम Uh, opposed to volatile memory we have non volatile memory non volatile memory does not lose its contents when power is removed power ho ya na ho koi masla nahi examples kya hai ji rom hai rom stands for read only memory theek hai so do we have any read on pichle zamane mein roms bahut zyada hoti thi aajkal yes we have roms uh uski example aap aapke agar phone pe aap dekhe na for example if you have uh, a samsung galaxy phone and you say ke इट इज थर्टी टू जी बी ये जो फोन है ये थर्टी टू जी बी फोन है सो वट डज दैट थर्टी टू जी बी मीन थर्टी टू जी बी इज बेसिकली साइज ऑफ द रॉम ठीक है इट इज द साइज ऑफ द नॉन वोलेटाइल मेमरी यू कैन यूज दिस मेमरी फॉर स्टोरिंग बोथ द एंड्रॉयड ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम उसको स्टोर करने के लिए ऑल द एप्स जो कि आप डाउनलोड करते हैं उस उनको स्टोर करने के लिए यू कैन यूज दिस मेमरी और इसके अलावा आपका कोई डेटा है तस्वीरें हैं वीडियोस हैं सॉन्ग्स हैं ऑडियो है सो यू यूज दैट मेमोरी फॉर दैट सो दिस दिस मेमोरी इज काइंड ऑफ द रीड ओनली मेमोरी और रॉम ठीक है अच्छा 
इट इज नॉट स्ट्रिक्टली रीड ओनली मेमरी यानी यू कैन राइट इट एज वेल आप जब नई तस्वीर यू शॉर्ट अ पिक्चर सो दैट पिक्चर इज स्टोर्ड इन साइड द रॉम बट इट इज इट इज कॉल्ड रॉम इन द सेंस के इट इज नॉन वोलेटाइल लाइक इट इज नॉट द कॉन्टेंट्स डू नॉट गो अवे विद पावर अच्छा एंड सिमिलरली लाइक आपके फोन में देर इज रैम एज वेल बट यू डोंट मैंशन एंड मोस्टली पीपल आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन द अमाउंट ऑफ रैम ठीक है सो यूजली तीन जी बी या चार तीन जी बी या दो जी बी इस इस हिसाब से रैम भी मौजूद होती है बट पीपल आर यूजली नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन दिस मेमरी इन द रैम सॉरी इट इज गी बी ठीक है एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो गी बी पीपल आर मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन दिस दिस मेमरी ठीक है वाई बिकॉज इट इज इट डिटर्मिन्स द अमाउंट ऑफ इमेज दैट यू कैन स्टोर एंड ऑल दैट ठीक है सो ये उन चीज़ों को डिटर्मिन करता है अच्छा एंड अदर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ नॉन वोटाइल मेमरी इज द फ्लैश मेमरी यू एस बी जो फ्लैश ड्राइव होती हैं सो दे आर ऑल्सो नॉन वोलेटाइल बिजली हो या ना हो कोई मसला नहीं है एंड सीमोस कम्प्लीमेंट्री मेटल ऑक्साइड सेमी कंडक्टर मेमरीज आई गेस इट शुड नॉट बी हेयर सीमोस मेमरीज को दे आर नॉट नॉन वोलेटाइल मे बी एम रॉन्ग बट आई गेस दे आर नॉट क्योंकि हमारे पास वो जो मदर बोर्ड में बैटरी लगी होती है तो वो सीमोस मेमोरी को पावर अप करने के लिए ताकि इट डज नॉट लूज इट्स कॉन्टेंट्स वेन द पावर गोज डाउन ठीक है अच्छा जी आई गेस दिस दिस गाय शुड अपीयर हेयर बट आई नीड टू कन्फर्म इन एनी केस यू कैन ऑल्सो कन्फर्म ठीक है सो वोलेटाइल और नॉन वोलेटाइल मेमरीज का हमने जिक्र किया हार्ड ड्राइव इट इज ऑल्सो नॉन वोलेटाइल ठीक है ऑप्टिकल डिस्क ड्राइव दे आर ऑल्सो इन प्रिंसिपल नॉन वोलेटाइल अच्छा जी देन वी वॉन्ट टू नो के प्रोग्राम्स या एप्लीकेशन इनके जो इंस्ट्रक्शन हैं वो रैम में कैसे आते हैं और कैसे वापस जाते हैं ठीक है सो वी टॉक अबाउट इट in in the in the beginning of this lecture as well so what is the first thing that happens when you turn on your system when you turn on your system when you start your computer there is a software called the bios that software is loaded into uh, the, where is this software located this software is located in a chip and that chip in fact this software is called a firmware because it is permanently stored inside a chip ठीक है दैट चिप इज यूजली अ फ्लैश मेमोरी बेस्ड चिप इन द ओल्ड डेज इट यूज टू बी अ रॉम सो अ रॉम वॉज लाइक परमानेंटली स्टोर्ड यू कुड नॉट चेंज इट बट नाउ डेज बायोस इज शिप्ड इन फ्लैश मेमरीज सो द फर्मवेयर दैट यू गेट और बायोस द फर्मवेयर दैट यू गेट इट इज इन फ्लैश मेमरीज तो फ्लैश मेमरी में क्यों होता है बिकॉज इसको अपडेट करना आसान हो जाता है क्योंकि फ्लैश मेमरी को यू कैन Uh, rewrite it over and over again and where you can do that very easily you don't need any special tools for that so you can do writing very easily in the case of flash memory so the first thing that happens is ki aapka jo bios hai wo jo firmware hai wo execute hota hai theek hai jab wo execute hota hai to wo kya karta hai wo aapki hard drive ke ek khas area se uh, jisko hum kehte hain boot sector theek hai jisko hum kehte hain boot sector वहाँ जाता है और वहाँ से एक छोटे से प्रोग्रामर को छोटे से प्रोग्राम को लोड कर देता है इन टू द रैम ठीक है वैन यू स्टार्ट द कंप्यूटर सर्टन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम फाइल्स आर लोडेड इन टू रैम फ्राम द हार्ड ड्राइव तो हार्ड ड्राइव से कुछ फाइल्स को लोड किया जाता है इन टू द रैम ये कौन लोड करता है ये बायोस लोड करता है हार्डवेयर के किस इलाके से हार्डवेयर के बूट सेक्टर से लोड किया जाता है ठीक है और इन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम फाइल्स का क्या काम होता है इन फाइल्स का काम ये होता है कि ये ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम को लोड करते हैं ठीक है सो so, इसको हम कहते हैं बूट लोडर ये जो फाइल्स लोड होती हैं इनको हम कहते हैं बूट लोडर इसको हम क्या कहते हैं बूट लोडर सो ये बूट लोडर जो है ये बूट सेक्टर में मौजूद होता है ठीक है तो दीज आर सम फाइल्स ऑफ द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम जिसको उठाया जाता है रैम में सो इट इज एग्जीक्यूटेड जब ये एग्जीक्यूट होता है तो फिर क्या होता है ये आपके ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम को लोड करता है ठीक है सो ये क्या करता है ये आपके ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम को विंडोज को या कोई और ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम अगर आप यूज कर रहे हैं उसको लोड करता है तो फिर आपको वो स्क्रीन पे नजर आना शुरू कर दिया होता है कि लोडिंग विंडोज और 
फिर आपको वो लॉग स्क्रीन आती है एंड देन यू एंटर योर पासवर्ड एंड यू लॉग इन ठीक है अच्छा सो so, ये सारी फाइल्स आपकी हार्ड ड्राइव पे पड़ी होती हैं और हार्ड ड्राइव से इनको लोड किया जाता है इनटू रैम ताकि इनको फिर एग्जीक्यूट किया जा सके सो वंस द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इज लोडेड एंड यू हैव दिस इंटरफेस फिर आप किसी एप्लीकेशन को रन करेंगे ठीक है वो एप्लीकेशन कहाँ पे इंस्टॉल होती है ऑन योर हार्ड ड्राइव फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप रन करते हैं जैसे कि यहाँ पर मैं आप ब्राउजर को रन करते हैं ठीक है सो ब्राउजर मीन्स द सॉफ्टवेयर दैट यूज फॉर ब्राउजिंग द इंटरनेट सो आप वो जो ब्राउजर का आइकॉन है उसको डबल क्लिक करेंगे जब आप उसको डबल क्लिक करेंगे तो क्या होगा ब्राउजर का जो सॉफ्टवेयर है वो हार्ड डिस्क पे कहीं पड़ा होगा ठीक है तो उसको वहाँ से उठाया जाएगा एंड इट विल बी लोडेड इन टू योर रैम एंड वंस इट इज लोडेड इन टू योर रैम द माइक्रो प्रोसेसर विल स्टार्ट एग्जीक्यूटिंग दोज इंस्ट्रक्शन और आपके सामने ये ब्राउजर विंडो नजर आ जाएगी तो फिर आप उस सॉफ्टवेयर को यूज कर सकेंगे ठीक है सिमिलरली इफ यू रन एनी अदर एप्लीकेशन किसी और एप्लीकेशन फर्स्ट के पेंट को स्टार्ट करते हैं तो आप स्टार्ट मेन्यू में जाएंगे और उस एप्लीकेशन को सिलेक्ट करेंगे और वो एप्लीकेशन उसकी एग्जीक्यूटिबल फाइल हार्ड ड्राइव पे कहीं पड़ी होगी तो वहां से फिर उन इंस्ट्रक्शन को लोड कर दिया जाएगा इन ग्रैंड ठीक है और सी पी यू करना शुरू कर देगा दिस इज योर पेंट एप्लीकेशन फिर आप उसमें एडिटिंग वेडिटिंग करते हैं एंड देन यू प्रेस सेव एज और सेव बटन तो यहाँ से फिर वो फाइल जो है उसको वापस हार्ड ड्राइव पे स्टोर कर दिया जाएगा सो दिस इज हाउ बेसिकली सॉफ्टवेयर और एप्लीकेशन या प्रोग्राम जो है उसको हार्ड ड्राइव से उठा के रैम में लाया जाता है फिर उसको एग्जीक्यूट किया जाता है और uh, फिर अगर आप कोई डेटा या रिजल्ट जनरेट करते हैं तो उसको आप सो so स्टोर करते हैं so this is how these things happen theek hai acha ram is an abbreviation for random access memory isko random access memory isliye kehte hain ki you can randomly access any location in the same amount of time theek hai uh it has two types one is dynamic ram and the other is static ram i guess i have mentioned this uh in our uh, initial classes on in this course theek hai now there is a difference between these two types of rams dynamic ram or dram acha iska jo uh, memory cell hota hai na uh, memory cell just which is used to store one bit theek hai memory cell which is used to store a single bit of a dram so isme uh, aapka usually there is one transistor uh, one t and one capacitor theek hai uh acha and then we have static ram static ram or s ram so s ram mein uh, each memory cell memory cell is used to store a single bit a memory cell is used to store a single bit so a memory cell of static ram it has around 6 transistor theek okay? hai memory cell of a d ram is one transistor and one capacitor and memory cell of a of an s ram is six transistors theek okay? hai तो अब आप फर्क देख लें डायनामिक रैम में का जो मेमोरी सेल है इट इज सिंपलर इट इज सिंपलर एंड स्मॉलर सो यू कैन हैव अ लॉट ऑफ मेमोरी सेल्स ऑफ डायनामिक रैम और डी रैम इन इन द सेम एरिया बट एस रैम के केस में वी हैव सिक्स ट्रांजिस्टर्स ठीक है सो ये ज्यादा एरिया यू समझ ले लेता है ठीक है सो we cannot have uh, a lot of density of sram sram ki hamare paas bahut zyada density nahi ho sakti unit area mein zyada zyada sram cells hum nahi dal sakte and isme zyada transistor hote hain to ye mehangi padti hai theek hai but sram is very fast srams are faster and more reliable theek hai uh, dynamic ram it is slower and it needs to be reenergized reenergize se murad ye hai ki iske memory cell mein there is a capacitor the capacitor it loses charge very quickly so before it loses charge it needs to be recharged taaki pata lage ki isme jo bit hai wo kaun sa tha to iski maine aapko agar aapko yaad hai example bhi di thi ki dynamic ram cell ki misal aisa aise bande ki hai jisko koi cheez yaad na rehti ho to wo koi cheez yaad kaise karta hai bar bar repeat karta hai theek hai agar aap usko kahe ki ji aalu ka rate jo hai na wo for for example 80 rupaye kilo tha तो इसको याद रखो तो वो बार बार कहेगा अस्सी रुपए किलो अस्सी रुपए किलो अस्सी रुपए किलो दैट इज द एग्जांपल ऑफ डायनामिक रैम 
since the memory cell of a dynamic RAM, it has this transistor and capacitor combination, the capacitor loses ch charge over time. It cannot retain its contents. So the contents need to be rewritten again and again. So the memory needs to be refreshed. Okay? So that makes dynamic RAM slower. Dynamic RAM slow bhi hoti hai. Uh, dynamic RAM fayda uh, yeh ke yeh sasti hoti hai kyunke you can have a lot of dynamic RAM in a unit area but it is uh, it is slower than static RAM static RAM is the best uh, class of memory that you can have but it is expensive static RAM is expensive than uh, dynamic RAM why? because of these 6 transistors per memory cell 1 bit ko store karne ke liye 6 transistors aapko use karne patte so we use uh, static RAM is used for special applications such as cache memory. So usme S RAM chips use hoti hain. Okay, so cache memory hum later section mein decide we discuss karenge ki uska kya purpose hai. Dynamic RAM ki there are different types of dynamic RAM. Uh, one is SD RAM, synchronous dynamic RAM. So synchronous dynamic RAM is basically synchronized with the system clock. So, आपकी जो system clock होती है, जिस speed पे आपकी motherboard जो है वो से या आपकी जो front side bus जिस speed पे operate करती है, so उसी rate, उसी speed पे, उसी clock पे आपकी RAM भी operate करती है. So, it is called synchronized dynamic RAM. It is faster than the normal dynamic RAM. ठीक है? क्योंकि it works at the same speed as the system clock. Then we have double data rate uh, SD RAM, DDR, just come simply both then DDR memory, DDR1, DDR2, DDR3. Okay, so those are different generations of DDR. Now DDR is double data rate uh, SD RAM, so it basically transfers twice the amount of data for each clock cycle as dynamic RAM, SD RAM. <coughs> SD RAM. अगर एक साइकल में 8 बिट डेटा ट्रांसफर करती है तो DDR जो है वो 16 बिट डेटा ट्रांसफर करती है तो इट गिव्स यू डबल द डेटा रेट देन वी हैव सेकंड जनरेशन DDR DDR2 इट इज फास्टर देन DDR हाउ एंड व्हाई वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू गो इनटू दैट बट यू शुड नो के ये तमाम मेमोरीज किस टाइप की हैं एंड व्हाट आर देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स DDR3 इट इज थर्ड जनरेशन ऑफ DDR एंड इट वाज डिजाइंड फॉर कंप्यूटर्स विद मल्टी कोर प्रोसेसर्स and again, it is faster than DDR2. Similar DDR4, fourth generation of DDR, it is faster than DDR3. Every generation basically improves the speed. And then we have Rambus Dynamic RAM or DRAM. So Rambus DRAM is again much faster than uh, SD RAM. How and why? Like we need to look into uh, the details of it. Uh, that is not the subject, the object of this course. So we'll we'll leave it at this. Uh, achha, RAM chips, you might have seen RAM chips. This is how RAM chips uh, look. Inki, uh, there are two varieties of RAM chips. This RAM chip is called a SIM module. Uh, it is called single inline memory module. Okay? Or in short, SIM. S I M M. If you go to the market, they say that they are dim. They say that they are dim. They say that they dim. They say that they uh, so these are DIMMs, dual inline memory modules. These are single inline memory modules. These are dual inline memory modules. Single inline module kya matlab hai? Ye jo aapko connections nazar aare na, these are connections. So this is just one connection. Thik hai? Dono side on pe ye ek hi connection hai. Ye aapas mein short huye hume. Thik hai? So like you can think of these as ke ye jo chip hai, is me se aapko ye ek, do, teen, chaat, paan, chhe, saat, aad, no, des, gyara, para, tera, chauda, pandra, sola, satra, tara, unnis. Unnis ye, or say for example, uh, the ye johan, these are around maybe thais ke kareeb hain, say for example. So ye batis pins hain aapke paas, thik hai? So ye batis aapke paas pins hain uh, coming out of this, uh, this memory module. And in the case of dual inline memory module, so ye jo aapke paas pins hai, uh, for example, these pins that you see, these are 64 pins, say for example, or 32 pins. So 32 pins is side pe hai and 32 pins opposite side pe hai. So aapke paas 64 pins hai, jo ke aapko, aapke uh, motherboard ko connect kar rahi hai, ya system bus ko connect kar rahi hai with these RAMs. So dual inline memory module mein aapke paas jo number of physical wires hain ya pins hain coming out of the RAM module that is double 
देन द सिंगल इन लाइन मेमरी मॉड्यूल ठीक है तो आपके पास वो जो फिजिकल कैपेसिटी है डेटा को ट्रांसफर करने के लिए दैट इज डबल दैट ऑफ सिम मॉड्यूल ठीक है तो दीज आर अगेन टाइप्स ऑफ रैम मेमरी मॉड्यूल्स दैट यू माइट कम अक्रॉस इन इन योर कंप्यूटर्स uh one is single inline memory module the other is double inline memory module so the difference is in the physical the number of physical wires or connections available on both these uh, modules so one has double the physical connection so definitely its capacity to transfer data is double that of a sim module okay acha ji if you want to uh, insert or add or enhance the ram of your system so you can turn off your system uh or or you can plug in plug in your computer you can do a hot uh kya kehte hain uh uh hot plugging aap kar sakte hain hot plug in theek hai when the system is on you can plug in a new device or memory theek hai so you can do that and you can check whether uh, it 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 has been detected or not so aap system ko on kare सॉरी uh, uh, पहले आप सिस्टम में ये मेमोरी ऐड करें वंस यू हैव एडेड एडिशनल मेमोरी सो आप चेक करें कि आप इसमें कौन सा अप्रोप्रिएट जो मॉड्यूल है जिसको आपका सिस्टम सपोर्ट करता है फॉर एग्जांपल आपका सिस्टम जो है वो डी टू को सपोर्ट करता है आप तो वो आपको कैसे पता चलेगा कि ये डी टू को सपोर्ट करता है यू हैव टू लुक अप द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन ऑफ योर लैपटॉप और योर कंप्यूटर और द मदर so that will tell you ke wo kis kis memory ko support karta hai if it supports ddr2 so that means you cannot insert ddr3 in it so ddr3 aap usme phir nahi dal sakte uh, usually mostly aaj aajkal jitne bhi computers hain they they use the dim modules dual inline memory modules sim modules bahut kam hi koi use karega lekin in any case you need to be sure ke kaun si cheez supported hai to aap usko phir install kare theek hai once you install add memory to your system you should check aap computer जब ऑन करते हैं तो गो टू सिस्टम प्रॉपर्टीज एंड चेक द इंस्टॉल मेमोरी के वो अपडेट हुई है या नहीं हुई अच्छा वी टॉक अबाउट एस रैम के एस रैम इज यूज एज मेमोरी कैश नाउ व्हाई डू वी हैव मेमोरी कैश क्यों हमारे पास मेमोरी कैश होती है व्हाई डू वी यूज इट नाउ द प्रोसेसर लाइक इट डज द प्रोसेसिंग इट हैज टू प्रोसेस डेटा in order to process data it has to fetch both the instructions and the data so instructions ko bhi isne fetch karna hai aur unko decode karna hai aur fir execute karna hai aur data jis pe isne operate karna hai usko bhi isne fetch karna hai and then that data needs to be processed theek hai both the instructions and data they reside in the ram ye ram mein reside karte hain theek hai now the ram is much slower than the processor रैम जो है वो प्रोसेसर से बहुत ज्यादा स्लो है ठीक है तो डिफरेंस जो है वो यूं समझ लेना कि 500 टाइम्स 400 टाइम्स का फर्क होता है यानी रैम जो है प्रोसेसर जो है वो रैम से 500 गुना फाइव टाइम्स या 500 परसेंट वो ज्यादा फास्टर तो इट हैज अगर प्रोसेसर एक काम एक सेकेंड में करती है तो रैम वही काम पाँच सेकेंड में करती है तो चार सेकेंड आप ज़ाया कर रहे होते हैं वेन यू हैव टू वेट फॉर डेटा टू कम फ्राम द रैम ठीक है सो इस केस में फिर आप क्या कर सकते हैं हाउ कैन अगर सिस्टम जो है इसी तरह चले कि वी हैव वन पार्ट ऑफ द सिस्टम दैट वर्क एट अ वेरी हाई स्पीड एंड देन देर इज अनदर पार्ट ऑफ द सिस्टम दैट वर्क वेरी स्लोली तो फिर आपके सिस्टम की ओवरऑल परफॉर्मेंस बहुत ख़राब हो जाती है तो इसका हल लोगों ने कैसे निकाला है इसका हल लोगों ने ये निकाला है कि वी हैव रैम इज स्लो बट रैम इज चीप ठीक है सो वी कैन हैव अ लॉट ऑफ रैम बट इट इज स्लो ठीक है तो अगर हम इससे कोई चीज एक्सेस करते हैं तो इट टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम सो हम क्या करते हैं सो वी हैव वट वी डू इज के वी क्रिएट स्मॉल स्टोरेज स्पेसिस विच वी कॉल कैशेज हम कैशेस क्रिएट करते हैं एंड दोज कैशेस दे कैन ऑपरेट मच मोर फास्टर लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल द एल वन कैश और लेवल वन कैश इट ऑपरेट्स एट द सेम स्पीड एज द प्रोसेसर ठीक है सो यहां से डेटा को या इंस्ट्रक्शन को एक्सेस करना बहुत आसान है बहुत जल्दी हो जाता है ठीक है बट इट इज इट इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड यूजिंग एस रैम्स 
तो ये इसको बनाना महंगा है सो वी हैव वेरी लिटिल ऑफ एल वन कैश यानी हमारे पास एल वन कैश जो है ना वो चंद किलो बाइट्स होगी वन ट्वेंटी एट किलो बाइट तो ये हमारे पास से एल वन कैश की मकदार होगी ठीक है लेटस चेक आउट हमारे पास ये जो सी पी यू है इसमें कितनी एल वन कैश है ठीक है सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ दिस सी पी यू वी हैव एल वन कैश की मकदार कितनी है वन ट्वेंटी एट किलो बाइट्स जिस सी पी यू को मैं यूज़ कर रहा हूँ उसमें एल वन कैश की जो मकदार है दैट इज़ वन ट्वेंटी एट किलो बाइट्स दैन एल टू कैश उसकी मकदार फाइव ट्वेल्व किलो बाइट्स है बट एल टू कैश इज़ स्लोअर दैन एल वन कैश इट इज़ स्टिल फास्टर दैन द रैम बट इट इज़ स्लोअर दैन एल वन कैश फिर एल थ्री कैश है उसकी उसकी साइज जो है वो दैट इज़ थ्री मेगा बाइट्स बट एल थ्री कैश अगेन इट इज़ स्लोअर दैन एल टू कैश एंड मच स्लोअर दैन एल वन कैश येट इट इज़ फास्टर दैन रैम ठीक है so why do we have these different levels of uh, caches l1 l2 l3 theek hai ye hamare paas kyun hai so the reason in short in short the reason is ke it helps improve the system performance ye system performance ko improve karta hai kaise improve karta hai ke bajaye iske ke hum har instruction ko fetch karne ke liye ram ke paas jaye har data byte ko fetch karne ke liye ram ke paas jaye हम क्या करते हैं एडवांस में बहुत सारी इंस्ट्रक्शंस और बहुत सारा डेटा जिनका हमें यकीन होता है कि या कॉन्फिडेंस होता है कि इन इंस्ट्रक्शंस ने फ्यूचर में एग्जीक्यूट होना है या इस डेटा ने फ्यूचर में एक्सेस होना है उसको पहले से हम उठा के एल वन कैश और एल टू कैश और एल थ्री कैश में डाल देते हैं ठीक है अब ये एल और एल टू जो है ना ये तो सी पी यू दे आर पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोसेसर दे आर बिल्ट ऑन टू द प्रोसेसर ठीक है L3 cache is uh, it is uh, between the RAM and the CPU. It is on the motherboard. Okay, it is not on the uh, on the CPU. ये microprocessor के ऊपर नहीं होता. But it 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 is faster than the RAM. Uh, it is slower than L2 cache and L1 cache. But it is faster than the RAM. ठीक है? तो इन छोटी छोटी हाई स्पीड मेमोरीज का क्या फर्क फायदा होता है इन छोटी छोटी हाई स्पीड मेमोरीज का फायदा ये होता है कि हमें बार बार ये जो स्लोअर रैम है इसको कांटेक्ट नहीं करना पड़ता हम एक ही मरतबा में बहुत सारी इंस्ट्रक्शंस और डेटा उठा के एल वन कैश एल टू कैश और एल थ्री कैश में रख लेते हैं और जब भी हमें डेटा चाहिए हो तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी सर्च इट इन एल कैश यहाँ अगर हमें नहीं मिलता देन वी सर्च इट इन एल कैश यहाँ पर भी अगर हमें नहीं मिलता देन वी सर्च इट इन एल कैश अगर यहाँ पे भी नहीं मिलता तो देन वी गो एंड आस द रैम अबाउट इट ठीक है तो हम फिर रैम से एक्सेस करते हैं <coughs> अगर रैम में भी नहीं होता तो देन वी एक्सेस इट फ्रॉम द हार्ड ड्राइव ठीक है नाउ दिस इज हैंडल्ड ऑटोमेटिकली इन मोस्ट केसेस द प्रोसेसर हैंडल्स इट आपको पता भी नहीं चलता एज प्रोसेसर के वो डेटा कहाँ से उठाता है आप यही एज्यूम करते हैं और यही समझते हैं कि वो रैम से डेटा को उठा रहा है बट रैम से वो बार बार डेटा को नहीं उठाता वो एक ही मरतबा में रैम से बहुत सारा डेटा और इंस्ट्रक्शन उठा लेता है और फिर उन इंस्ट्रक्शन और डेटा को जब उनको ज़रूरत हो तो उनको फिर L1 वन कैश एल टू कैश और एल थ्री कैश वहाँ से उनको एक्सेस करता है ठीक सो द कैश मेमोरी इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दफॉर्मेंस ऑफ अ कंप्यूटर सिस्टम एंड इन दिस कैश मेमोरी लाइक दोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इज L1 वन कैश सो अगर आपके पास टोटल कैश बहुत ज़्यादा भी हो लेकिन L1 वन कैश बहुत कम है सो मे बी उसकी आपका जो प्रोसेसर है उसकी परफॉर्मेंस इतनी अच्छी ना हो so the greater the amount of l1 cache that you have the better your performance the greater the amount of l2 cache theek hai to phir bhi aapki performance achhi hogi lekin agar l1 aur l2 cache ki miqdar bahut kam hai aur l3 cache bahut zyada hai so then that may not affect your performance that much still it is better than no cache memory at all theek hai lekin ye jo processors ki performance mein fark aata hai na core i3 aur i4 i5 aur i7 aur i9 so mostly the difference comes uh, agar number of cores cores number of processor cores agar sab mein ek jaise hain so the difference comes uh, due to the the amount of cache memory available on each processor theek okay? hai so cache memory is very important for the performance of a computer system acha ji then we have read only memory i guess we have talked about it uski read only memory is a memory jisme data ya instructions permanently store hote hain and it is non volatile theek hai to wo uh, fark nahi padta usse 
बट अगेन आजकल की जो रीड रीड ओनली मेमरीज हैं तो वो फ्लैश टेक्नोलॉजी पे बेस करती हैं सो दैट मेमरी कैन बी री रिटर्न यू कैन री राइट दैट मेमरी इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली यानी उसको आप पहले पहले जो रॉम्स होती थी सो देर वर रॉम्स विच वर बेसिकली इरेजेबल प्रोग्रामेबल रॉम्स लेकिन उनको इरेज करने के लिए यू एट टाइम्स नीडेड अल्ट्रा वायलट लाइट तो आप अल्ट्रा वायलट लाइट से उनको इरेज करते थे एंड देन यू वुड प्रोग्राम इट इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली ठीक है सो नाउ इट इज मोस्टली रॉम्स आर यू क्रिएटेड यूजिंग फ्लैश मेमरी सो उनको जस्ट लाइक यूर यू एस बी फ्लैश ड्राइव आप उनको रीड uh, कर सकते हैं और राइट कर सकते हैं यू कैन राइट न्यू प्रोग्राम ऑन टू इट तो ये जो फर्मवेयर है फर्मवेयर इज बेसिकली हार्डवेयर चिप ठीक है विच कैन बी फ्लैश मेमरी बेस्ड जिस पे आपने सॉफ्टवेयर uh, जो है वो परमानेंटली स्टोर किया होता है ठीक है सो परमानेंटली अगेन इट इज नॉट समथिंग स्ट्रिक्टली परमानेंट यू कैन अपग्रेड द फर्मवेयर इज वेल फर्मवेयर को भी आप अपग्रेड कर सकते हैं जैसे आपने शायद अपने फोन में किया हो ठीक है सो आपके पास यू बाय अ फोन इट हैज अ सर्टन वर्जन ऑफ एंड्रॉयड और आई ओ एस वो आपके पास होता है यू टर्न ऑन द फोन यू यूज दैट ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम लेकिन जब उस ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम का अपग्रेड आ जाता है तो फिर आप उस ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम को या अपने फर्मवेयर को अपग्रेड करते हैं ठीक है और फर्मवेयर को अपग्रेड कर अपग्रेड करने के लिए यू हार्ड रीसेट अपने फोन को यू डू अ हार्ड रीसेट तो हार्ड रीसेट में फिर क्या होता है आपका जो फर्मवेयर है वो चेंज हो सकता है या अपग्रेड होता है ठीक है सो यू कैन डू दैट ये हम यू कैन यू डू इट ऑन योर स्मार्टफोन यू कैन डू इट ऑन योर डेस्कटॉप और दीज कंप्यूटर अच्छा जी तो फ्लैश मेमोरी जो है इट कैन बी रेज इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली एंड री रिटर्न सिमिलरली दूसरी जो मेमोरी है आपके सिस्टम में जो यूज होती है सीमोस कंप्लीमेंट्री मेटल ऑक्साइड सेमी कंडक्टर मेमरी तो मैंने आपसे कहा था कि फ्लैश मेमोरी इज यूज टू स्टोर बायोस इसमें आपका बायोस बेसिक इनपुट आउटपुट सिस्टम जो है वो वाला जो सॉफ्टवेयर है वो इसमें स्टोर्ड होता है या बर्न होता है सो इट इज दैट्स वाई इट्स कॉल्ड द फर्मवेयर बायोस की जो सेटिंग्स होती हैं यानी डेट क्या है और बायोस का जो पासवर्ड है सिस्टम का जो पासवर्ड है उनकी क्या वैल्यू है uh, uh, या बूट बूट सीक्वेंस क्या होगा आप जब आपका जब कंप्यूटर स्टार्ट होगा तो ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम को कहाँ से लोड किया जाएगा हार्ड ड्राइव से डीवीडी ड्राइव से यूएसबी पोर्ट से या इन चीज़ों से तो ये सारी सेटिंग्स स्टोर होती हैं इन सीमोस मेमोरी सो दैट इज़ अ सेपरेट स्मॉल चिप जिसमें ये सारी सेटिंग्स स्टोर होती हैं सो ये जो सीमोस मेमरी होती है दिस इज वोलेटाइल सो इफ यू टर्न ऑफ यूर सिस्टम and there is no CMOS battery, तो those settings can be lost. but आपका जो system है motherboard है उसमें एक battery लगी होती है and that battery basically uh, powers the CMOS memory ताकि आपने जो settings की हुई हैं अपनी BIOS की या boot sequence की और और चीज़ों की तो so those settings can be retained. ठीक है तो बाज़ात इसमें एक uh, क्या कहते हैं tip note कर लें बाज़ात लोग जो है ना अपने कंप्यूटर के बायोस पासवर्ड लगा लेते हैं ताकि आपका कंप्यूटर जब भी ऑन किया जाए तो ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम नहीं लोड होता ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम के लोड होने से पहले यूज़र से पासवर्ड मांगा जाता है कि जी आप इस कंप्यूटर को यूज़ कर रहे हैं तो एंटर द पासवर्ड दैट पासवर्ड इज स्टोर्ड इन साइड द सीमोस मेमरी तो अगर आपको वो पासवर्ड भूल जाए और आप कंप्यूटर को यूज़ ना कर सकें तो उसका एक आसान तरीका ये है कि आप अपने कंप्यूटर को खोलें और मदरबोर्ड में सीमोस बैटरी को लोकेट करें ठीक है सीमोस बैटरी को लोकेट करें और उस सीमोस बैटरी को उतार निकाल लें अपनी पोजीशन से थोड़ी देर के लिए निकाल लेकिन फिर उसको वापस डाल दें जब आप उसको निकाल के वापस डालेंगे तो ये सीमोस मेमोरी है इसको पावर मिलना बंद हो जाएगी थोड़ी देर के लिए और इसके कॉन्टेंट्स जो हैं वो ऑटोमेटिकली फिर वाइप ऑफ हो जाएंगे या क्लियर हो जाएंगे तो वो जो पासवर्ड्स वगैरह आपने लगाए हुए थे बायोस पर वो सारे पासवर्ड्स भी क्लियर uh, हो जाएंगे ठीक है अच्छा जी मेमरीज ऑल द मेमरीज दैट वी टॉक्ड अबाउट दे ऑल हैव दिस वन इम्पॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक 
which basically determines the speed of these memories and that characteristic is called access time. Uh, access time is the amount of time it takes for the processor to read uh, from the memory. Okay? So it is measured in, in units of time and that unit of time is becoming smaller and smaller with time. Memories are becoming faster and faster. Okay? So normally humans, our responses and your reflexes and they are very slow. For example, ये जो one tenth of a second का magical figure है ना, तो ये हर जगह पे काम आता है। हम आवाजों को भी अगर सुनते हैं, तो उनको में differentiate करने के लिए we need a delay of at least one tenth of a second। हम अगर images को देखते हैं, तो objects को देखते हैं, तो नए object को उसका image बनाने के लिए भी हमें one tenth of a second का difference चाहिए। और on the average, if we blink an eye, so we blink it in one tenth of a second, ठीक है? So one tenth of a second is a very magical number, but even in this one blink of an eye, the computer can perform millions of operations. So that is how fast a computer works, ठीक है? And that is uh, that also gives us an idea कि how fast these memories work. So ये जो access time की terminology it is measured in milliseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, and nowadays picoseconds. So picosecond is basically one trillionth of a second. Nanosecond is one billionth of a second. So nowadays memories are becoming faster. So nanoseconds or picoseconds may uh, maybe uh, uh, nanoseconds. I am sure. Picoseconds. I'm not. I do not know. Like there, it would be hundreds of picoseconds maybe. Uh, th this is how the excess time is uh, of memories. Take it. Achha. Apart from memories, we talked about in our initial in, um, introduction to to the computer hardware that we might need adapters. Take it. Adapters. Uh, adapter. Adapt is mean to adapt to a new situation. Apne aap ko kisi nee cheez ke mutabik dhalna. That is uh, adaptation. So adapter cards they are used to enhance uh, a computer's function by adding additional components to the computer okay so adapter cards kya karte hain? it enhances functions of a component of a desktop or server system unit uh, and or provides connection to peripheral devices so adapters jo hain wo ya kisi peripheral device ke saath connection provide karte hain ya uski functionality ko enhance karte hain so examples are we can have sound cards like we we can uh, have sound card or video card these are adapter cards okay they enhance the they can enhance the functionality uh, a particular functionality of, of uh, the desktop computer or something like that uh, similarly uh, we have expansion slots uh, on our computer expansion slots are basically sockets or ports or connectors on a desktop or a server motherboard uh, which can hold an adapter card, which can hold an extension card, ठीक है? किसी और device, याने हम अपने computer की जो input output capabilities हैं, उसको बढ़ा सकते हैं. We can add new type of peripheral components or devices to our computer. And in order to be able to do that, we need expansion slots. अगर हमारे computer के motherboard में there are expansion slots, that means we can add new devices. For example, if we want to connect our computer to, uh, we want to watch TV on television on our computer. So we can add a TV tuner card to our computer. And that TV tuner card will be added or inserted in an expansion slot. For example, if we want to play 3D games on our computer, so we can buy a 3D graphics card and add it to our uh, motherboard of our computer. Uh, for example, if we want to connect to uh, an optical fiber line, okay? so we may buy uh, uh, an optical uh, modem, okay, uh, and we can insert that modem on our desktop computer and it can start communicating with uh, the optical fiber line and it can be used to transmit data on the optical fiber line. Uh, for example, if we have a desktop computer and that desktop computer does not have a Wi-Fi uh, device and we want to connect to a Wi-Fi network using uh, a desktop computer, so we can buy uh, a Wi-Fi adapter 
and we can insert that Wi-Fi adapter either in an expansion slot or in maybe a USB port. Okay, so we can do that. So these these are the purpose of adapters. Okay, so we can have different types of adapter cards. We can have Bluetooth adapter card to connect to Bluetooth devices. We can have a modem. Uh, we can have a network interface card to connect to the to a local area network. We can have sound card, TV tuner card. We can have uh, USB uh, adapter cards, and that those USB adapter cards will enable may enable us to connect to high speed USB devices. Similarly, we can um, connect video capture devices, digital video camera, or something like that, or we can uh, uh, connect. Uh, Graphics, uh, graphic cards, for, for example, if you want to have uh, 3D uh, graphics uh, capabilities, so we can do that. Uh, we can uh, connect uh, uh, virtual musical instruments, like we can have a MIDI um, musical instrument digital interface card inserted into our system, and that will allow us to connect to musical instruments or create virtual musical instruments. So uh, this is our motherboard, and these motherboards come with these uh, uh, expansion slots. And these white colored expansion slots, these are usually PCI slots. PCI stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect. So this slot uh, is an expansion slot because it can help expand the capabilities of our computer. Uh, by connecting or adding new devices. So nowadays we have PCI Express uh, slots. So you can, they, they perform at much higher speeds. So you can connect uh, new type of devices uh, or you can add new type of devices to our computer using these expansion cards. Okay. So this is our motherboard and this is say for example, this is a video graphics card. Usme ye graphics processor laga hua hai. Uska apna ek, uh, uh, heat sink or fan hota hai, hai? Uh, this is say for example a sound card ye bhi humne addition lagai ki hui hai. this may be a modem or some other card hai? so these cards uh, are inserted into the expansion slot on a desktop motherboard and they basically enhance or expand the capabilities of our computer uh, then we have this technology plug and play it was introduced by Microsoft uh, this is a registered trademark of Microsoft. So plug and play means that Microsoft uh, worked together with hardware manufacturers and they came up with the system where uh, Microsoft uh, came, Microsoft Windows came with uh, lots of device drivers for, for uh, uh, pre-installed device drivers for different devices. Okay. So when you buy, when you bought a new hardware device, you could uh, insert that hardware or plug that hardware device uh, on your computer without turning off the computer, and the computer would automatically detect that new hardware, and it would try to find or install device driver for that hardware, and you would be able to use that hardware. Okay. So plug and play का मतलब ये था कि आप you buy a new hardware. You plug it into your computer and you start using it. That 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 was uh, basically the the purpose of this technology. Okay, peripheral devices ko automatically recognize kiya jaye aur unke device drivers ko uh, the software that would run that device unko install kiya jaye automatically. This was the idea of plug and play. USB adapter again. USB universal serial bus. It is uh, bus whenever you see whenever you hear the term bus so bus is basically uh, nothing but uh, we'll talk about buses uh, in in the coming slides but bus jo hai, it is basically uh, nothing but a plain copper wire one wire or parallel wires more than one wire which which are basically used for transferring data so buses are used for transferring data just like normal buses that we are used to, they are used for transferring people, moving people around different places. So, here computer, mein, whenever you hear the term bus, so that means you are basically transferring bits, ones and zeros, from one place to another. So, universal serial bus, uh, it is uh, uh, a serial bus. Serial bus means this is a bus in which 
देर इज ओनली वन लेन ठीक है टू ट्रेवल तो यहाँ पे बिट्स जो है ना वो एक कतार में आ, सफर कर रहे होते हैं एक दूसरे के पीछे जो है ना एक कतार में सफर कर रहे होते हैं दैट इज सीरियल पैरल अपोज टू सीरियल वी है पैरल बस ठीक है सो पैरल बस में हमारे पास वायर्स की तादाद ज्यादा होती है जैसे एक सड़क है मोटरवे है सो so, मोटरवे में आपके पास तीन लेन्स हैं एक साइड पे तीन लेन्स हैं दूसरी साइड पे तो एक टाइम में तीन गाड़ियां जो हैं से फ्रॉम ईस्ट टू वेस्ट जा सकती हैं और तीन गाड़ियां फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट से आ सकती हैं ठीक है सो दिस इज पैरल डेटा ट्रांसफर और दिस इज अ पैरल बस सीरियल बस में वी 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 ओनली हैव अ सिंगल लेन सिंगल लेन होती है उसमें एक टाइम में एक गाड़ी जा सकती है सो so, गाड़ियाँ जो हैं वो एक दूसरे के पीछे जाएंगी सो वन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कंप्यूटर्स तो देर आर नो कार्स देयर देर आर ओनली बिट्स देयर सो इन ऑन सीरियल बस बिट्स ट्रेवल वन आफ्टर दी अदर एक दूसरे के पीछे आगे पीछे जा रहे होते हैं ठीक है सो सीरियल बस इज दे आर सिंपल टू डिज़ाइन दे आल दो डेटा रेट उनका इतना ज़्यादा नहीं होता जितना पैरल का होता है लेकिन पैरेलल जो बसेस होती हैं उनके अपने प्रॉब्लम्स होते हैं उनमें ये जो क्रॉस टॉक होती है इंटरफेरेंस होती है ठीक है दीज आर इलेक्ट्रिकल वोल्टेज वी आर ट्राइंग टू वेरी बिट बिट्स जो हैं दे आर इलेक्ट्रिकल वोल्टेज ठीक है वन जीरो या प्लस फाइव जीरो वोल्ट ये हो रहे हैं तो वोल्टेज जब कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंज होती हैं तो फिर ये जो लाइन्स हैं इनका आपस में इशूज hmm, पैदा होना शुरू हो जाते हैं uh, इनकी अपनी कैपेसिटेंस डेवलप होना शुरू हो जाती है कैपेसिटेंस की वजह से फिर उनकी रेजिस्टेंस वगैरह आना शुरू हो जाती है तो लाइन कैपेसिटेंस इज़ अ प्रॉब्लम तो ये सारे प्रॉब्लम्स जो है ना वो फिर uh, बढ़ना शुरू हो जाते हैं सो so, अगर आपके पास देर इज़ अ पैरल बस और पैरल बस की लंबाई बढ़ना शुरू हो जाए सो देन यू रन इन टू प्रॉब्लम्स सो वी कैन नॉट हैव वेरी लॉन्ग पैरल कनेक्शन जबकि सीरियल बस में यू कैन हैव अ वेरी लॉन्ग सीरियल बस उसका कोई इशू नहीं है इट इज़ जस्ट वन लाइन जिस पर बेड्स ट्रैवल कर रहे हैं एट मोस्ट टू लाइन्स वन फॉर आउट गोइंग ट्रैफिक वन फॉर इनकमिंग ट्रैफिक ठीक है सो यूनिवर्सल सीरियल बस जो है ये इट इज़ कॉल्ड यूनिवर्सल बिकॉज ऑलमोस्ट ऑल डिवाइस लाइक दे हैव अव एस बी पोर्ट आपके स्मार्टफोन्स भी हैं दे कम विद यू एस बी पोर्ट जिसको आप चार्जिंग के लिए भी यूज़ करते हैं जिसको आप डेटा ट्रांसफर के लिए भी यूज़ करते हैं सिमिलरली डेस्क टॉप कंप्यूटर्स हों लैपटॉप्स हों टेलीविजन्स हों प्रिंटर्स हों ऑलमोस्ट एवरी थिंग हैज यूनिवर्सल सीरियल बस पोर्ट ठीक है सो यू एस बी इज अ वेरी कामन पोर्ट अवेलेबल ऑन आवर कंप्यूटर्स एंड यू एस बी अडाप्टर्स आर बेसिकली डिवाइस दैट आर कनेक्टेड टू द यू एस बी पोर्ट एंड दे इनहेंस योर डिवाइस फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप अपने माउस और की बोर्ड को वायरलेस माउस और वायरलेस की बोर्ड को कनेक्ट कर सकते हैं यूजिंग योर यू एस बी पोर्ट तो आप उसके साथ एक यू एस बी एडाप्टर लगा लेते हैं तो वो माउस और की बोर्ड के साथ कम्यूनिकेट कर सकता है यू कैन कनेक्ट थ्री जी डिवाइस टू द यू एस बी पोर्ट ऑफ योर कंप्यूटर ठीक है तो आपको डायरेक्ट कनेक्टिविटी मिल जाएगी uh, अपने कंप्यूटर फ़ोन नेटवर्क के जरिए आप इंटरनेट के साथ कनेक्ट कर जाएंगे ठीक है आपके कंप्यूटर में इफ़ यू डू नाट हैव वाई फाई क्या कहते हैं कार्ड अगर आपके कंप्यूटर में नहीं है सो यू कैन बाय वाई फाई यू एस बी अडाप्टर ठीक है तो आप उसको लें और आप उसको अपने कंप्यूटर में इंसर्ट करें एंड देन यूजिंग यूजिंग योर यू एस बी पोर्ट यू विल हैव अ न्यू वाई फाई डिवाइस जो कि विच विल इनेबल यू टू कनेक्ट टू वाई फाई नेटवर्क ओके so you can use all these uh, different types of uh, methods to enhance uh, the capacity uh, or to provide uh, connections to new peripheral devices to your computer so you can do that acha similarly <coughs> uh, 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 other than that uh, other than usb ports our computer uh, uh, may need to be connected to different types of display अब हमारे पास ये जो डिस्प्लेज हैं तो उस उनमें भी मुख्तलिफ किस्म के वी कैन हैव पोर्ट्स सो दिस इज़ द मोस्ट कॉमन पोर्ट द वी जी ए पोर्ट सो आलमोस्ट एवरी कंप्यूटर हैज़ अ वी जी ए पोर्ट एंड वी जी ए बेसिकली स्टैंड फॉर वीडियोग्राफिक सरे सो यू कैन यूज दिस पोर्ट टू कनेक्ट टू एनी डिस्प्ले डिवाइस 
then we have the DVI port, uh, digital video interface. And nowadays, uh, in almost all modern computers and laptops, we have the HDMI port. So the HDMI port uh, can be used uh, for the trans. It is basically a high definition media interface. Uh, and it can be used to connect to the latest projectors and other peripheral devices. So, on your laptop or computer, pe, there might be an HDMI interface. So, if you want to project your screen ko project karna on a projector, just like we do it in class, so we can use the HDMI port to connect to the projector or we can use the VGA port or any other port. Okay? In any case, if you want to compute, connect one device to another, you need to make sure that they have the appropriate or compatible interfaces. Unke aapas mein, uh, they have some compatible interfaces to connect to. Okay? This is compatible. C-O-M-P-A-T-I-B-L-E. -E, okay? So they have compatible interfaces uh, through which they can connect to each other. <clears throat> you need to make sure that. Uh, similarly, computers have uh, usually uh, a network interface card. Up your computer, mein there is a network interface card. So you can connect to a local area network. You can connect, you can create a local network of uh, computers. Uh, this type of port, it is called an Ethernet port. So Ethernet is uh, uh, basically a, uh, a type of port through which you can connect different computers and you can create an Ethernet uh, network. Okay? So you can use it, uh, almost all computers have this port and you can use it to connect to a wired network. Wired network se murad ye ke tamam jo components hote hain us network ke they are connected to each other using uh, these Ethernet cables. Un cables ke zariye wo aapas mein connect hote hain. Uh, audio, uh, again, this is very easy. Uh, uh, in order to listen, um, in order to uh, audio output, if you computer generate kar rahe, in order to listen to that, you need to connect this audio out to a speaker. Uh, if you need to do recording, uh, so and you have a mic, you can use the mic in. Uh, similarly, you can also use the audio in to do uh, recording or to capture audio from uh, on your computer. You can do all sorts of things with that. Iske lava, we every computer comes with a lot of USB ports, and USB ports they allow you to connect multiple and different types of peripheral devices. Like you can connect printers with USB ports, you can connect scanners through USB ports, you can connect external hard drives through USB ports, you can uh, add uh, Wi Fi adapters through USB ports, you can connect mouse and keyboards through USB ports and you can connect maybe joysticks and other things through USB ports. So USB ports, uh, there are plenty of those ports on your desktop computers and they can be used to uh, connect to multiple types of peripheral devices. Asha, we talked about buses. So what is a bus? A bus is basically uh, any device, uh, sorry, uh, a bus is basically a combination of uh, conducting wires or uh, conducting lines on the motherboard. And the purpose of these uh, conducting lines and wires is to connect or uh, to enable different devices of the system to communicate with each other. CPU, microprocessor, ne RAM se uh, communicate, karna hai, data transfer, karna hai, so it needs a bus to connect with the RAM. Now, what is a bus? A bus or kuch nahi simple copper key connections hai, thikhi? conducting wire key connections hai, jis pe bits ko transfer kiya ja sakte, jis pe voltages ka ko transfer kiya ja sakte, thikhi? So, that is what a bus is. Uh, what is the purpose of a bus? It allows different parts of the system inside and outside the system to communicate with each other, thikhi? How many types of buses we have? We have generally we have two types of buses. One is the data bus, the other is the address bus. On the data bus, data travels. On the address bus, address travels. Okay. Ram se agar aapne koi cheez copy karni hai. 
तो रैम की कैपेसिटी तो बहुत ज्यादा होती है से फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव एट गीगा बाइट ऑफ रैम एट जी बी रैम सो मैंने वहां से अब फर्ज किया फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई नीड टू कॉपी ट्वेंटी बाइट्स ऑफ डेटा और वन किलो बाइट ऑफ डेटा से फॉर एग्जाम्पल तो वो वन किलो बाइट ऑफ डेटा कहाँ पे पड़ा हुआ है एट जी बी इज अज स्पेस सो आई नीड टू प्रोवाइड एन एड्रेस के फैच दीज मेनी बाइट्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम दिस मेमरी लोकेशन ठीक है सो दैट एड्रेस नीड्स टू बी स्पेसिफाइड एंड दैट एड्रेस विल ट्रेवल ऑन द एड्रेस बस सो पहले एड्रेस आएगा फिर जब ये एड्रेस रैम को प्रोवाइड कर दिया जाएगा तो फिर उस एड्रेस से डेटा को उठा के डाल दिया जाएगा ऑन द डेटा पर्स ठीक अच्छा नाउ वी मैंशन दिस टर्म वर्ड साइज इट वॉज इम्पॉर्टेंट वर्ड साइज क्या चीज है इट इज द नंबर ऑफ बिट्स द प्रोसेसर कैन एक्स इंटरप्रेट एंड एक्सिक्यूट एट अ गिवन टाइम सो वी सेट दैट मॉडर्न कंप्यूटर्स मॉडर्न प्रोसेसर जस्ट लाइक द इंटेल को राइट फाइव इन दिस लैपटॉप इट इज इट इज इट इट्स वर्ड साइज इज सिक्सटी फोर बिट इसका मतलब क्या है कि इसके जो इंटरनल रजिस्टर्स हैं दे आर सिक्सटी फोर बिट वाइड इसका जो एल यू है इट इज सिक्सटी फोर बिट वाइड इट कैन एड सब्रैक एंड लॉजिकली मैनिपुलेट सिक्सटी फोर बिट नंबर ठीक है इसका वर्ड साइज सिक्सटी फोर बिट है इसका ये भी मतलब है कि इसकी जो डेटा बर्स है उसका साइज सिक्सटी फोर बिट है सिक्सटी फोर बिट डेटा कैन ट्रेवल एट द सेम टाइम ऑन इट्स डेटा बस ठीक है तो डेटा बस वर्ड साइज की जो इम्प्लीकेशन है इट इज ऑल्सो ऑन द डेटा बस इज वेल ठीक है एट टाइम्स वर्ड एड्रेस बस और डेटा बस का साइज साइज एक जैसा हो सकता है बट यूजली एड्रेस बस जो है हाँ मोस्टली इट इज इट इज द सेम साइज बट बाजात ये उससे कम भी हो सकती है डेटा बस से ठीक है लेकिन यूजली इट इज द सेम साइज एज द एज द एड्रेस पर ठीक है सॉरी द डेटा पर्स यानी साइज ऑफ द एड्रेस पर्स और विथ ऑफ द एड्रेस पर्स यूजली नाव डेज इन मॉडर्न कंप्यूटर्स और मॉडर्न सी पी यूज स्पेशली सिक्सटी फोर बिट सी पी यूज इट मे बी द सेम और द एड्रेस पर्स मे बी स्लाइटली स्मॉलर दैन द डेटा पर्स ठीक है अच्छा Okay, so this is the CPU, and uh, uh, the CPU uh, it 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 transfers uh, data to the RAM, and it uh, reads data from the RAM. So this is two-way traffic going in and out of the CPU, and the ability like how much data uh, can go and how much data can be read from the RAM. It depends upon the width of the Uh, CPU uh, of this data bus. So the data bus between the processor and the uh, memory, the size of that data bus or the width of that data bus determines the speed of the data transfer. If this data bus is wide, more data can be transferred. If this data is data bus is not that wide, then more data, less data will be transferred. ठीक है? तो ये जो जस्ट लाइक इसकी जो एनॉलोजी है वो यही है कि अगर आपके पास एक रोड है उसमें लेंस ज़्यादा हैं तो ज़्यादा गाड़ियाँ ट्रैवल कर सकती हैं ज़्यादा लोग जा सकते हैं इन अ गिवन टाइम और अगर उस पर नंबर ऑफ लेंस की तादाद कम है तो फिर कम लोग जा सकेंगे सो जस्ट लाइक दैट अगर इफ द डेटा बस इज़ वाइड इनफ सो मोर बिट्स कैन ट्रैवल ऑन दैट डेटा बस इन अ गिवन टाइम इफ दैट इज़ नॉट द केस दैन फ्यूर बिट्स विल ट्रैवल ठीक है सो द साइज ऑफ डेटा बस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट For achieve in order to achieve a higher bandwidth or data transfer rate uh, inside a computer. अच्छा, what other type? एक तो हमने types of buses की बात की कि generally we have data bus and address bus. Address bus वो bus होती है जिसपे address travel करती है, ठीक है? And data bus is the bus on which data travels. Uh, but there are uh, there are also other types of uh, buses, ठीक है? Uh, for example uh, one bus is the system bus it is also called the front side bus so ye wo bus hai jo ke processor ko connect karti hai with the ram so the bus that connects processor with the ram it is the front side bus now the front side bus will have both the address and data buses kyunki processor ne agar ram se koi data uthana hai so usko pehle address bhijwana hai ke maine is location se mujhe ye data chahiye 
और इसके अलावा डेटा जब वहां से फिर रीड होगा तो दैट डेटा विल कम ऑन द डेटा बस सो द फ्रंट साइड बस इट इज द बस दैट कनेक्ट द प्रोसेसर विद द मेमोरी और रैम ठीक है सो इट इज कॉल्ड द फ्रंट साइड बस बैक साइड बस इट इज बेसिकली द प्रोसेस इट इज द बस दैट कनेक्ट द प्रोसेसर टू द कैश मेमरी ठीक है सो देर इज द एल थ्री कैश एल थ्री कैश इट इज नॉट ऑन द प्रोसेसर एल वन और एल टू कैश जो है ना वो उसी चिप पे बनी होती हैं या फेब्रिकेट की जाती हैं जिसपे प्रोसेसर होता है सो दे मे नॉट नीड अ सेपरेट बस बट फॉर एल थ्री कैश वी नीड अ सेपरेट बस एंड दैट बस इज कॉल्ड द बैक साइड बस ठीक है and then we can have expansion bus so the expansion bus it allows the processor to connect with peripheral devices so jo dusre peripheral devices hain which can include all the devices uh, like the hard drive or the printer the scanner uh, the modem the network interface card so all these other devices so they are connected with the cpu through the expansion bus theek okay? hai Asha, lastly, we'll talk about the power supply uh, of our computers, both the desktop and the laptop computer. So this is the power supply of the des desktop computer. This is the back side of it. This is where you connect it to the mains. So यहाँ पे आपको 220 volt AC मिलता है. Or here you get DC power supply. जो inside processor के जो तमाम जो components होते हैं, they operate on DC. So this power supply converts the AC power supply that it gets from the utility, Vabda se jo isko milti hai, AC power supply usko DC mein convert kar deta hai, theek hai? Uh, the power supply plays a very important role. It should be good enough, uh, kyunki aapka jo computer hai, uh, if, if for its reliable operation, it needs a very good power supply, theek hai? Uh, aapka jo laptop hota hai, it also comes with uh, a power supply and it is usually called the AC adapter. तो ये एसी को डीसी में कन्वर्ट कर देता है सो so, यहाँ इसको 220 वोल्ट्स इनपुट पे मिलते हैं आउटपुट पे ये डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द मेक ऑफ द लैपटॉप इट कैन गिव यू 19 वोल्ट्स और 15 वोल्ट्स और 16 वोल्ट्स डिपेंड करता है आप डेल यूज कर रहे हैं एच यूज कर रहे हैं या उनके कोई और मॉडल यूज कर रहे हैं सो इट कैन वेरी फ्रॉम मॉडल टू मॉडल इन मेक टू मेक मोबाइल कंप्यूटर्स में देर इज ऑल्सो बैटरी एज वेल बैटरी भी मौजूद होती है ठीक है इट डज नॉट ऑलवेज कंज्यूम ए सी पावर तो ए सी पावर जो है वो बैटरी को चार्ज करने के लिए यूज होता है एंड uh, आपका जो लैपटॉप uh, है इट गेट्स पावर फ्राम द बैटरी यू कैन रिमूव द बैटरी आप अगर बैटरी खराब हो गई है या कोई मसला है या नहीं है या यू डो नॉट वॉन्ट टू कैरी द बैटरी यू कैन रिमूव द बैटरी एंड यू कैन ऑपरेट योर लैपटॉप डायरेक्टली ऑन ए सी सप्लाई आप ए सी के साथ डायरेक्टली कनेक्ट कर दें और आप इसको डायरेक्टली ऑपरेट कर सकते हैं सिमिलरली आपके जो स्मार्टफोन्स हैं या मोबाइल फोन्स हैं सो दे आल्सो कम विद दीज बैटरीज लीथियम आयन लीथियम आयन रिचार्जेबल बैटरीज होती हैं इन सम स्मार्टफोन्स यू माइट बी एबल टू रिमूव दीज बैटरीज एंड रिप्लेस देम इन मेनी स्मार्टफोन्स जैसे कि नाव डेज जो कि आ रहे हैं इट इज़ नॉट ऑलवेज ईजी टू रिप्लेस दीज बैटरीज लाइक दैट ठीक है सो आपके जितने भी आईफोन्स हैं या सैमसंग के जो गैलेक्सी एस सेवन एस 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 एट एस टेन वगैरह ये जितने भी हैं सो उसमें जो बैटरी होती है इट इज़ मोस्टली फिक्स एंड यू इट इज इट इज़ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रिप्लेस दो बैटरीज उनको रिमूव नहीं किया जा सकता आसानी से ठीक है सो बैटरी इज़ अनदर सोर्स ऑफ पावर फॉर दीज कंप्यूटर्स अच्छा जी देन हाउ डू यू टेक केयर ऑफ योर कंप्यूटर अगेन आखिर में तो इन ऑर्डर to take care of your computer uh, i'm not sure ye bahar wahan pe ye milte the ke you could buy cans of compressed air so isme air compressed ki hui maujood hai and you can use it for uh, dusting your laptop so we used to buy these uh, when we were in korea and then there was there was this this tissue uh, jis pe pehle se hi wo uh, i guess alcohol type cheez lagi hoti hai so you could use that to clean the surface of your uh, laptop display pe to aapko it is not recommended that you use it you can use a damp cloth to clean uh, clean it theek hai lekin jo uh, aur jo components hain aapke laptop ke ya computer ke so you they might be easier to clean with uh, with uh, with with those uh, the other tissue jis pe pehle se alcohol type cheez lagi hoti hai theek hai 
and then this is compressed agar aapke paas ye nahi hai so you can use a blower so it is always a good idea ke after uh, some time you you clean up uh, your kya uh, kehte hain your computer so uski dusting dusting kare to agar aapke paas blower hai to achhi baat hai blower nahi hai so you can use these compressed air canes agar ye bhi nahi hai so then you need to invest in a blower theek hai तो so, या आप किसी से सर्विस करवा दें तो सर्विस करवाने वाला जो है वो उसको लैपटॉप को या आपके कंप्यूटर को खोल के उसमें से जाले माले हटाता है और उसकी डस्टिंग वस्टिंग करता है साफ़ करता है यूजिंग अ ब्लोअर टू क्लीन अप द डिब्री ताकि अगर फ़ैन वगैरह कोई हैं या कोई और चीज़ है फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल दिस इज़ अ फ़ैन स्पेशली आपके लैपटॉप्स जो हैं सो so, उसमें एक सक्शन के लिए कहीं फ़ैन लगा होगा फिर एग्जॉस्ट के लिए भी मे बी देर इज़ अ फ़ैन और देर इज़ जस्ट वन फ़ैन so you need to be sure ke ye fan dirty it's not dirty it's clean and it can move uh, freely there is no blockage uh, agar blockage wagaira hoti hai to that can result in your computer being overheated theek hai so similarly you need to be sure agar aap uh, apne computer mein you have a dvd reader uh, so you need to be sure ke jo dvds you are using they are clean they are, they do not have any dust kyunki uska jo head uh, lens hai that can get dirty and its performance can like suffer so you need to take care of your computer and uh, you can you can read this material uh, and this will give you some hints on how to take care of your computer so this is the end of this lecture we talked about various components of a computer inside and outside started from the cases we we talked about different things we talked about the motherboard the processors we talked about the machine cycle the cooling methods used for cooling the processors uh we talked about memory and its types uh, we talked about different peripheral uh expansion uh, peripheral component connection options to the computer or the way we can expand our computers we talked about different adapters buses power supplies we talked about the advantages of cloud computing and finally we talked about how to take care of these computers and mobile devices so i hope like uh, you have learned something out of this lecture this is going to be up until now up until this point this is the material that will uh, be like assessed in the mid term so i hope you listen to this lecture and i hope you will prepare well for the mid term so i'll give you instructions on how the mid term is going to be conducted until then Uh, a lot of this